<laughs> it's important tonight. <laughs> it's important. I keep fucking forgetting. <laughs> Jesus. Beg Christ. for your bits. Beg for your bits. I gotta fucking not pay attention to him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Y'all a three man booth right now. Get it going here. Twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman on a cold fall night. Man, it started hailing on the uh, ride home, dude. It was like driving on marbles Uh-oh. on the way to get here. Oh shit. So it was hardcore on the floor. <clears throat> so let's see, are we up here yet? Yeah, it looks like we're good. No commercials. I just lost your camera sale. There you are. You're back. Yeah, it's it locked up. Everybody locked up. Did it? It's fun on Twitch, man. Yeah, well, none of this stuff's ever ever a hundred percent. So right now starting off three man booth. Twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman is the chat room fills up. Infidels, we're back Wednesday night. Uh, Going to be a fun night tonight. Uh, taking a look at a very special Conspiracy Horseman project. You guys here, the ones in the chat room filling up, are going to get first look at our uh, ghost uh, hunting adventure. So very cool. And uh, this is the place to be tonight. Twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman. Or if you're listening in on Russo Brand or HackerHameen.Podbean.com. Uh, get on over here on Wednesday night, 6.15. If you can make it, it's always a even better experience. Uh, but you know us because we slayed MCs back in the rec room era. Our style broke motherfucking backs like Kemp and Terra. Most rap infidels came loud but unheard. But we pulled out, kicked out, and we rounded them off to the nearest third. And it's 33 and a third tonight, infidels, and we're kicking out on three all night long because it's the Conspiracy Horseman three-man booth right now with Hacker Hameen, Big Stevie Cool, and Big Salala. We'll see if Gigi P is ready to do his run and maybe he's already under the ring infidels y'all <laughs> yeah we're back we're here uh there he is is he here he's in the house There's just a big running there he is there he is yeah y'all <laughs> welcome buddy just did the the rap intro we were we're here live uh four man style and uh, it's a it's gonna be a cool night for all of us so uh, I'm glad to see all you guys. Hope you guys' week's going well. Uh, I had two decent days off and uh, feel a lot better to make it through the big production week ahead. We've got a hacker, com. What's going on, Stevie? How you doing, man? Sleeveless must be warm down there still. Uh, it's getting cooler. It's getting cooler. It's in the 60s, and we're looking forward to some fall weather and uh, looking forward to uh, the, the ghost hunting season, I guess it is. We're kicking it yeah. off uh, tonight. It's going to be fun. Yeah, the favorite season of the Horsemen by far. I think we're all Halloween junkies to some degree. You know, you know how big of a deal this is? My my wife, she's on the chat room, but she's watching the stream. So if you if I sound like okay. like Ben, if I sound like Ben on a TV interview saying with the radio voice, yeah, I sound a little <laughs> stiff. That might be why. Always <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've wrestled it. Yeah. Uh, welcome from it's... underneath the bed where you were standing. <laughs> Good to see you. His Thank hands you. watching. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you are in good spirits today. Oh, well, even, even though it's getting oh, cold get over it? there spirits? in Atlanta. Ah. <laughs> hey, you were. Hey, listen. Well, I had been will finish the introductions, but you were you were heavily featured in this video. Did you even watch it? I'll answer the question. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I even told you, you idiot. When no, I you said you didn't say anything, you yes, gave I a did, thumbs didn't. up. No, I told you, didn't the initial video? I said, wouldn't it be cool to have your wife do the intro, and you were like, oh, she hates that type of thing. Of course I watched it. All right, so okay. then there you go. I just proved you wrong. You well, know. okay, Tad. <laughs> proved me wrong. <laughs> no, it's Ben Wah. I'm sorry, another. Well, big sister's guy. watching, so watch yourselves, infidels in the chat room. Uh, I already got 1,002 bits cheered and uh, from Nim, 319, Garbage X, Edge, our guy. We just put him over on Russo brand last night because Russo wanted to know where uh, Hacker Hameen got that awesome Conspiracy Horseman shirt, so we had uh, – Plug uh, our guy Greg down there in Louisville who who made that great logo for us, great shirt for us. And Russo, I think, definitely going to get one here too. So check it out at all our pro wrestling tea stores. They're easy to find. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, man, uh, how you doing, Big Sal? I'll have to these two uh, kiss it out here in a minute. I love you, buddy. I yeah, love you um, too. <laughs> no, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I love everybody. I am- <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing good now that the weather's just getting nice and cool. Fuck the hot weather. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. digging it, man. Now it goes back to barefoot, short weather. We're good. 
Yeah, I always pop when I, it. I always pop when you go out in the middle of winter barefoot and just sit in the snow with Shemp and you're just out there, a big oh, giant in the front yard in, in shorts. Can't wait. That's always a great I sight to wait. behold, man. However, I, was... I do want to for a moment have a moment of silence mm. because the the new day lost their titles. Mm. Oh, yeah. So let's all just have a moment of respect. Feel free to put us in for that. Mm. Well, I think for the next six months, not even, not even. I'm sorry. It was like a, it was like son of a bitch. Well, well, it's like when Papa I have a, sent him a 17 minute video and he thumbs, uh, he gives the thumbs up five seconds after I send it. So it's like that. No, I was gonna say you don't have to worry because uh, they will incur their rematch clause for the next eight months, and that's what you'll see yeah. every week. Yeah, we're not. We might see it again. Might see it a couple times more uh, now through. Uh, Survivor Series, I bet we see it at least five different ways. Uh, they might have a real Survivor Series when they go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah, see. <laughs> Who will survive? <laughs> um, yeah, man, that's the, one of the, the hot-button things I wanted to get to, but uh, you guys all good on welcomes. Everybody knows each other. You're you're one of the cool kids. You're here at twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman. Hi, everybody. Yeah. It's okay. GGP made it. He made it. Um, right from the men's room, everybody's got their drink of choice tonight. I'm uh, on the Evan Williams in the you Sons in the of Anarchy room? Cup. No, I figure you were getting it done. No, but... no, 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 no. I was just filling up my... That's well, after the show oh. starts. Yeah. <laughs> he waits until Stevie goes into a diatribe, and then he goes to the bathroom. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Oh, well, I mean, uh, that was one of the first things. We make the joke about uh, Saudi Arabia, but uh, still a hot-button topic, and more and more, as we predicted last week, leaking out. I saw that they've got... Th- three minutes of audio that they're sitting on now at news agencies of them legit chopping this dude up in real time, you know, in the room. Listen, like, man, didn't didn't kill I him first. I sent you guys shoot pictures this morning. Of, I of sent that? you guys those, those shoot pictures that were taken from the end that night. I didn't see it. I sent them in the chat. Papa Don was the only one to react to it, so I guess he's the only one who likes me. <laughs> he's got a bot in there that just thumped up everything. They Facebook <laughs> message him. So don't You don't know what? You Saudi. know what? Just because I give you guys a thumbs up, it means a couple things. One, it's a thank you. It's an appreciative thumbs up. It shows that you care. Exactly. Two, I've probably seen the video already. That's why I'm thumbing it up, because I agree with you and I like it. And three, there's no middle finger icon for you, Stevie, so you're lucky. That's it. Oh, that's it. I thought you were asserting your white privilege because of a white thumbs up. There's no there's no such thing as white privilege. That's a myth. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know when I, I see co- how the chat room reacts that if we lose our game <laughs> right now, we're at 55. <laughs> Are we at 55? Good numbers. Um, yeah, man. Appreciate all you guys being here. Uh, that that uh, and not getting chopped up in a consulate in Istanbul. Um, it's it's crazy because then you know as it crosses over to wrestling wwe taking a lot of heat randy orton getting cornered by a tmz uh, dude in the airport and and asked what to do push forward a lot of people think that you know doing the show is what's going to push things forward but that that might be somewhat of a corporate line in the pr which way are we going to go when these guys are really asked so no one you know really cuts their throat in the locker room or in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> well, and, can I can I yeah. say something? Can I interject for one second? Please. To be fair, you know, it's cliche. Yeah. Is, to be fair. To be uh, fair. <laughs> oh, fair. Yes, I'll be fair. <laughs> um, they always say as cliche as it sounds, the show must go on, right? WWE had a show where Owen Hart died in the middle of it, and they still went on. And he was one of their own, part of the family. And they still put the show on. They didn't stop. So there's no way they're going to stop. They're going to Saudi Arabia. They're going to put on the show. They're going to get that. They're going to get paid, and that's it. Yeah. And the employees are going to say, okay, boss, thank you for the fat check, and have a I nice day. I don't know. Day. Well, the employees are saying, uh, you know, from in the sheets that um, they don't want to go. Why are saying it? Because people are complaining. If that was the case, they wouldn't have went the first time. Come on. Uh, Come on, man. Well, no, this is extenuating circumstances when you're talking about a 2030 movement towards – uh, Americanization and culture and, and bringing in outside entertainment because you're already doing it in with the super rich in Hollywood Hills with Ferraris and whatever. They can do whatever they want out there. They bought up so much property. But here it is bringing it to there and you want to act like you're moving forward and then you go and do the most medieval 
thing with your money you could possibly do, which is a targeted hit inside a government building with a hit squad of 15 where you cut a guy to bits while he's still alive and you record it and the and the hit came right from the top princes out of the house of Saud. The dudes they are absolutely that will be in the crowd. Or remember when that big uh a square of it last time was marked out for the royal family where none of the peasants could get near them. Like it was a, a, like a football field size just for them. Same people. Those are your people. Same. Those are your people. Why do you think I, I picked the want... character? Why do you think I why do you think I, I made the backstory have that much depth? Well listen, I think the character picked you. you didn't pick the, <laughs> the twenty eight <laughs> pages one. picked me. Number hey, two, a... I want to know when Stevie Rich is gonna do his uh band seminar. Over there, when they're gonna bring him in, and he'll do his uh, twelve-week resistant I band seminar so. over in Saudi Arabia, and they they'll pay him in uh, gold bullion and whatever else they'll pay him in. Yeah, well, listen, listen. He to won't, this he won't say no. Well, you know, you listen to this. Well, speaking of not saying no, I know once the wheels started turning, the second you heard people from WWE don't want to go to Saudi Arabia, you were like, "What number can I call? <laughs> I can call no, this." Not at all, dude. Yum yum. I, I, Shopping on. Oh, no, 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 By the bookies. way, it's just really quick. I'm not. I'm not trying to step over you. The um, Aust- I know Australian newspaper says that Saudi Arabia, after the Turkish uh, officials have sh- have proof of the audio and uh, of of this guy getting killed, and now what Sal said, pictures that they're going to admit that they did it. If they really oh, are going to, they were making they jokes it. about it. They were making jokes about it last week. Yeah. Oh, I bet they're going to make jokes about it with Vince and Taker and everybody well, well, there that at the dinner table again. That was fly over. That was one of the things of last week. The guy, one of the guys, when asked, like a representative of the court, he goes, "Well, there's no body." <laughs> and then it comes out uh, yesterday that they dissolved the body in acid. Some, some straight up, you know, real gangster shit, man. Well, I mean, also, this is the biggest the gang. Reporters, the reporters were outside the consulate. They, they had a cleaning crew, a Saudi cleaning crew coming in with mops and cartons of milk and all this other stuff. Am I lying, Ben? No. What the fuck happened? Uh, they were, the boy they threw up. Right the boy threw up. We're making a there. We have to clean up. No, 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 no. I'm in Cape Tishy. No, no. He threw up in the back. I throw, I'm clean up. Clean up. Yeah. Dude, they'll I, clean I the body got good. got a new character Just... for, uh, for, for Sal over there. That was <laughs> I mean, legit, the, the way the hit went down from what from, I do all the day at work. From what I've researched, the way the hit went down is this guy gets called there to have a meeting with the top dude of the consulate, ambassador or whatever, and the hit team's there in place. He gets there, sees what's up. He's cornered. They legit tell the ambassador to get the fuck out of here, <laughs> go to the other room. They take him in the room with the big fucking table and start whacking whacking his fucking hands off and fucking legs and at a time taping it. Like, it, it's that fucking good fellas fucking level shit, man. <laughs> I just imagine the Tommy scene. Yeah. <laughs> goes, so when the first time you fuck out, and he says, <laughs> come this way, this way, over here, over here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, at least Tommy got one in the back of the fucking head. This way, they were really just chopping him up and shit. And the dude who's the hitter, they've already fucking identified. He said that he wears headphones and just plays music while he was chopping the guy up so he couldn't hear him screaming so it wouldn't bother oh, him. Sweet. So whoever, who I want to know what he was listening to. I think he's commercial. Music? Yeah, I was going to say, say he was listening to Ben's ring music. My, that my sent him over the fucking edge. <laughs> That's it. I love this fucking song. Yes. <laughs> the walk, the walk by Where the it, fire. Where is, where, what's the scale of this this type of? It's beyond a murder, beyond assassination, beyond murder one. It's, any, I mean, yeah. this is this is about probably. It's ex- probably a mob st- hit fully, man. I mean, it, it's oh, a absolutely. military. Yeah. It's a royal mob hit, really. It's as lethal as a Stevie I, kick. This is, <laughs> um, like uh, to me, this is. Put it this way, because of who did it, because of why it was done, because of Ooh. where it was done, not too soon. <laughs> because, because of what happened, this is the same thing as M, as an MS-13 bullshit. Yeah. It, it, where, they, where they put a chick up and then set her on fire for no fucking reason. Same shit. But those guys are, are fucking low-pants gangbangers. The fact that this guy got paid a couple, 
you know, let's say a couple hundred grand. Well, this is big that you get, you get called to a government building to meet the top fucking guy and it's a right. setup. That's, that's different than fucking, you know, some, some local shit, you know, like this right. came down from on high, like but straight up. This guy is a, probably a professional, you know, you know what I mean? But it's the same fucking level of shit. This is murder. This guy murdered him and he did it barbarically because that's how they fucking roll. 15 that's of them. That's what those guys did. <laughs> they were 15 deep. They, re- they sent 15 hitters they, for they one they guy and hacked this dude up <laughs> like old school style. That's what it, that's all it was. And to send a message, they could have <laughs> shot him. They could have done a million different things to him. Much cleaner, much better. But this was this was done like a go fuck yourself sort of thing. Yeah. Maybe oh, they were afraid he was going to survive like Rasputin. They just wanted to make sure <laughs> that everything gets done. Make sure this fucker doesn't get up again. Yeah. yeah like dude. they just really. The, and and they, if there's audio tape, there's video. And and what the phones those guys got, uh, some uh, what kind of music was he listening to? Uh, he was playing Taylor Swift. Eight, he eight was listen, ballads. He was listening to the Conspiracy Horseman, uh, Liquid That's Swords, Let the Bodies at the Floor, Slayer, he's Piece by Piece. Weezer, but like Weezer, Buddy that. Holly is good. <laughs> Buddy Holly. Was that fucking Three Kings where they stuffed the Michael Jackson CD in the dude's mouth and poured oil down his throat? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he was oh. listening to the Michael Jackson "This Is It" CD collection. Oh. <laughs> Buddy Holly from Weezer. That's fucking funny, dude. That's that's a funny <laughs> scene. If you imagine it like a Tarantino film, <laughs> you know what I mean. It definitely 40 is. Iron Patriots, mm. Stevie Christ would have revived him and then killed him again. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not it. This is not anywhere close so, to what happens on Far Cry 5. The, yeah. the, the government official was from what country? Uh, was it from Turkey, Turkey. From Turkey, yeah. You think he made a uh, turkey sandwich? But I'm Constantinople. No. No, I don't. I think he, sh- I think he shit his <laughs> pants and went to the other uh, room. He made some cranberry sauce. Yeah. talk about something else. Uh, what happened with YouTube, guys? Yeah, so you guys that know was the, the next thing. Behind the shutdown. Um, here's what I suspect because I I saw a piece, probably I don't know 20 hours before that, uh, the the night before about ICANN, the International Corporation of uh, Assigned Names and Numbers, which is a corporation that was made that just said we're taking over the internet pretty much and we're switching it to this new IP address key that everything has to switch over to. So it can pretty much install the internet kill switch, which all that stuff was backdoor in the net neutrality shit from last year. You know, this is, that's the fine print of what they could do. And that's where I bet I can actually started in the foundation of that. So they could gain total NSA government control of what they didn't have, even over Google's and the mega structure. So with that, everybody had to switch to this and they had a year's warning, but it didn't really become news until it became like underground tech news for corporations that would affect their security and shit like that. And they were forced their hand to do it. I think that's what happened with YouTube, but they didn't put out any statement, no precursor. It just went down, which to me, the other side of the long shot is, is it a Chinese hack? It, did they fucking hack Google and show that they can shut down YouTube? That's so funny, Sal. I just thought of a Chinese hack. Hey, yo. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a while. <laughs> that was good. He's going to Give me a beer. Uh, but that that's uh <laughs> that's pretty much, you know, what I think it went down behind the scenes and they either just were like prolonged it as long as they could, thinking that they weren't gonna hold their feet to the fire and they just got cut off and they're like, Fuck it, we gotta do it and then reboot the system. But no real story has come out about it yet. Well, there's the other part that says it was an opportunity there's two different Two different theories outside of that. There was the one that they were they were scrubbing. So I've been trying to search and see if there's even more stuff that you can't search on YouTube or through Google. And the other one is there was something connected to some kind of uh, human trafficking, child trafficking ring, and the FBI and the the government were trying to pinpoint these videos that were that were up there on YouTube. To so scrub. they, they kind of shut it down so they could search for it without 
everything. I hope that I hope that's why, not the other two reasons. But those are those are the theories that are out there right now. I haven't seen any, you know, red alerts going off of channels that got scrubbed today for content. You know, uh, no, I, mean, I meant I meant just I meant just those videos that were hanging around or right. searches like the old Hillary Clinton thing never comes up. Scandal, murder, it comes up with you know, favorite for president or this or that or the other thing that they want. Well, the big there. the big red flag that goes up is that look how close we are to election and now a YouTube is going out. You're talking about some yep. strange media control all the way around. You know, the, all the sites that got scrubbed. I was talking to SM Gibson again today from uh, the anti-media. He has an old Twitter that's up uh, now that was kind of inactive from years ago. But his major following still down uh, a week later. So before election time, any third party, they know. They know that third party media is what killed them last time around. You know, it, it was sure that Alex Jones watches, but that's not just his core coalition. There's so, a, a lot of people like us that are taking it all in, you know, and uh, they want to shut down all those third parties. Remember when Disclose got kicked off for what yeah, was it, 36 hours too? High impact, high impact flicks. Now it's high impact vlogs. Yeah. So he got, he got banned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and it was doing it to Infowars that emboldened them to do this. And you're going to see more crazy stories and I think happenings like this in the next three weeks going forward as well. Oh, it was a good run, boys. <laughs> mm. Well, go back go back to the Saudi Arabia thing for a second because we didn't even touch on the WWE and the, the greed portion of it or even uh, just – Yeah. It, it, it's There's so much stuff, and, and they could have been well ahead of this before Richard Branson, before even the New York Times pulled mm -hmm. out of a sponsorship deal. Uh, there's a ton of places. What was there when the UFC, the the, the, the people that own the UFC, yeah. pulled out of a multi uh, $100 million deal or a billion dollar deal out of there. Um, WWE could be right up there with these, with these people that are trying to almost buy that good PR, that philanthropy by not going. Uh, I don't know if there's lawsuits or any legal stuff going on, but it just seems like they're tone deaf to what's to what how big of a deal this is. I think they're a part of a bigger deal, dude. Because when they brought Ben Solomon over, they put him on that big media tour with The Rock, with went to the White House. You know what I mean? Like I think it's all part of a bigger thing that they've all agreed to, no matter what goes down. And they didn't think they'd get caught that hard with uh, their their bad business. But now they are, and now WWE's in a weird spot, but they're just going to keep bulldozing forward. Yeah, well, there's people are saying they're CIA operatives for Trump, too, that the, he's having Vince go over there Absolutely. for some reason. Yeah. yeah, I've said that on how many shows with you now, right? We said it on Locker Room. We said I think it, it was Russo. Meltzer, wasn't it? Meltzer said it. No, no I'm just kidding. It was you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, well, you can I, make fun of my you can make fun of my Stephanie. voice on this microphone again if you want. No, I no don't one cares me. about your voice. Your voice sounds sweet, and yeah. every thirty-seven of your microphones you have. I haven't sac I haven't speak. sacrificed as much for this business as Meltzer has, so I guess I'll just stay in line and stay small. That's you right, haven't sacrificed. Know your role. You haven't <laughs> sacrificed as much to be a fan, maybe a wrestler, or in the business, or a manager, or a stand-up comedian, but you haven't sacrificed the time to get home in time to watch the lot the show at 605 wow that's that's all that matters you, you could have been at the your beach rub and tug to get home yeah just in time to catch raw i'm sorry guys i hope you forgive me fucking pay your dues you fucking greenhorn i'm sorry, I'm that's sorry. right man set up a ring or two what i'm the fuck? sorry christ <laughs> sakes carry a board <laughs> yeah go move out of state or something change your whole entire life around fucking <laughs> dedication fucking, why not? Why not? Why fucking mutt <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, uh, so, you know what so what's the so what's the cia what's the cia angle on this if they're sending vince over there what is what are they trying to accomplish well dude they're not looking for new ring boys no oh, i mean I they want they're gonna want dissidents they're gonna want their own way in i mean all this slap and tickle handshake deal shit is still i mean what's under the surface that these guys can pull <laughs> murders like this when they want to because they're untouchable money wise uh, the 28 pages, like that was really the slap in the face when that came out. And then Trump went over there and fucking addressed them all. Like he was going to promo them all. And it just became like, Oh, you'll fucking bow to us too. You know, we'll go keep going forward. We'll get by it instead of like, no, somebody's going to answer these fucking real 28 pages. So all that shit's still unsolved. And you're just going to think that, 
a fucking uh, Finn Balor match is going to make it okay. Like, yay, they like Finn Balor. Everything's cool He's now. for everyone, though. Yeah. He is for everyone. Yeah. Listen, you really want to fuck this I was, out? I was going to say they'd, really be, wanna f- they'd be behind New Day, but now New Day's push is over with, so. Wow. Too really soon. Too soon. I <laughs> bet they called for the title change. Yeah. They said they can't. Yeah, they, okay, they weren't going there. Yeah, they will not be called for it, I think. <laughs> What they need to do, honestly, if they really want to fuck Saudi Arabia, just use some of the oil reserves we have in this country and don't take their they don't take their oil. That's it. We have hundreds of billions of barrels sitting on reserves. For what? Yeah. It's not a scarce like we said last week, it's not a scarce commodity. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't come from fossils, so you're not gonna shake up Exxon and the way all of them do business just to like do a fuck you. I mean, it sounds great ideology wise, but really? th- this you, is you think you think that if we don't buy oil from them for a month, you don't think the price of oil is going to dip? Are you kidding me, dude? The amount of barrels that we It's not about from? price. It's not about price. Uh, it's about they would know they would know we'd have to go back eventually. Right. So the, they would just play the waiting game and they can. And then that just makes everybody look weak when you have to go back to them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the Cold War tactics. You know, but uh should the show go on? Yeah, I, I agree and think it should. I mean, the wrestling part that's tied to it is what it is because that's what we're close to. But, Same man, Oscar over. <laughs> just for this to become like a fucking new, yeah, like a, a story. You know what I mean? Sorry to keep you up. <laughs> Very professionally. We start talking about wrestling and he just yawns like a cat. No, no, in the middle he, of starts, fucking... he started talking about wrestling and then we took, we, we jumped in the conversation. He's like, I'm no, not, no, that's what I mean. Like we started talking about it, not him. And he was just like, yeah. uh, I thought you said, you're okay, Spider. I'm sorry. Tom. And he cat, <laughs> and he just cat yawned. He didn't even cover his mouth. He was just like, yeah, I know it's much, <laughs> much more offensive than taking a piss break during the show for seven <laughs> minutes. I'm going to just start pissing in front of the camera. Right Guys, here, is the green well, is, time, is the rookie the on the show? The I'd like to thank all the new viewers and listeners <laughs> coming to the show to check out our paranormal special. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a chance to come in your living room today. <laughs> your way, you know, bring your wife, your kids to watch the paranormal special. It's Halloween. Everybody gather around. Let's watch the guys. Let's watch the horsemen. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah they're fucking chopped up. They're acid. The guy was wearing headphones while I chopped them up. <laughs> I'm gonna miss live on the air right now. Let's do it. <laughs> and ghosts. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh wait, ghosts are coming. So if you don't want to wait, go fuck yourself. Thanks oh, for listening. Shit. Thanks for listening. Uh, there you go, brother. I was gonna go at seven o'clock with that. If we got to pull another fifteen, unless you want. Oh, to go I thought with... we were gonna do the the mail. I thought we do the mailbag first. first. Yeah. You want to do yeah. mailbag first and wait Absolutely. till the end? Absolutely. Okay. Let's switch I actually, up the I actually do have a, an email that was sent to me. Please, please go ahead. And I want to start off with that. So wait, sent to your personal email address? Sent to Stevie Richards Fitness at gmail dot com. So. Through the website. Is it an uh, Illuminati invitation? No, I haven't gotten one of those yet. I, yeah. uh, this I'm not going to read the name like Ben does all the time. Yeah. I actually ah, read the email to first. The bus. Yeah. And this is under subject of feedback. I'm green. I'm first green. off, I apologize. I, I apologize for contacting you through this site, but I didn't know how else to do so. I hear you on the conspiracy horseman. I really identify strongly with your faith. I'm an ordained minister who has been burned by every church or ministry I've ever been a part of. And I find myself very lost and bitter these days. I find very few people I identify with, but hearing you on the podcast and especially how you handle the other guys when they take shots at your faith does really speak a lot about your character. No wonder your back hurts carrying that fucking cross. (laughs) Well, watch the the special that my part of the intro is uh, very well placed. Yeah, it is. It may be cheesy to say this, but the guy who I, I saw where Daisy Dukes and ECW has turned out to be the type of Christian I want to be. Just wanted you to know that. He didn't mention GG, GGP. So, <laughs> That's because I didn't wear Daisy Dukes and ECW. Mm. Not an ECW. That would probably oh, be no, where you would go ECW. back in the time machine, though. You'd probably go back to that part. Yeah. What, to see you and Daisy Dukes? No, to wear Absolutely. them. It's a, oh, I can do this. <laughs> So you dance around in Daisy Dukes? That's worth a couple of bucks. I'll, I'll toss you a couple of uh, bits. Boom. <laughs> Anyone who wants to see Stevie dance in Daisy Dukes in his living room, toss him a bunch of bits. <laughs> oh, we'll start no, I don't. You, the, you shows go. what you know. I don't have a living room anymore. It's my gym. Yeah, it's all gym. behind you. The gym the waiting room. It's the gym. That is the gym lobby. Yeah, this is the this is the <laughs> locker room. <laughs> it's a locker room. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, before I, I'm so I want to see. Wait, wait. I have a gold. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can I just say one thing? 
Sure. So Stevie just wanted to read an email that, that someone sent him that's anonymous that said he's such a great Christian to put himself over, but he won't admit who it's from. And it's to his direct email. And the guy doesn't know where to send emails, but he listens to the show. And every five minutes we say conspiracyhorseman at gmail.com. Hmm. Okay. Email's right there. Okay. <laughs> just saying. So if I say this guy's name, you're going to be like, oh, that guy. I know him. No, no, you don't have to say the name. I'm just saying it's funny. Reverend Billy Graham. Hey, I, li I like that there's somebody out there. Uh, Jesus. You, you know. Jesus sent me the email. <laughs> yeah, I like Tell that, uh, that, that we have those finish listeners. My lawn. Hey, I'm not knocking the guy's faith, dude. I, I, I Look, I'm right there with you. Yeah, well, I was about to knock his faith. I really like the part where he says that uh, <laughs> that he, he's an ordained minister and every place he's gone is shit on him and he has no faith left in him. That was my oh, favorite you're, you're part, really. Us. You're the voice of our Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Fuck you the way you oh, do you don't things. Want to touch this it wasn't exactly the way I thought it was going to go. Open arms. <laughs> Open arms. Send them over here. Uh, don't I'm worry, bro. I'm an ordained minister, too. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. You, Are you really? Yeah. Me, too. I'm standing. And, like, that's a different... Three different fucking, oh, orda yeah. I have three different ordained ministries. Nice. Mine's just the Universal Life Church. I got it thing. covered. I got it nice. covered. One yeah. for the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. There you go, Sal. I got to yeah. do a wedding next year, actually. So, um, you booked for a wedding? Yep. <laughs> Before you were wrestlers from Hans. Uh, oh, God. It's short. Uh, greetings, Horsemen. A specific episode of Gender Neutral Messaging System. You know I had to drop in. I always wanted to know your guys' favorite wrestlers before you got in the biz as well. Is Was there one guy that made you want to be a pro wrestler? Mine uh, was uh, first uh, Barber Brutus first. Beefcake and the Hart Foundation as my tag team. I was a Scott Hallmark. Uh, Hallmark. Uh, shout out Stevie. Uh, <laughs> since he was uh, the diamond stud rolling to the ring with uh, DD Me. Thanks again for all you guys do. Hans sent from Yahoo Mail on Android. Jesus Christ, that's it. It's the end of the world. It is a good freaking uh, run, boys, because such a short email from Hans, you know the world's going to end. Yeah, I know. Wow. Planet X, big time. Um, who's your guy, Sal? Uh, back in the day, a uh, tag team was the Road Warriors. They were fucking just outstanding, amazing. And believe it or not, the first one of the first guys I ever saw on TV was Black Jack Mulligan. When nice. he used to do the claw and they put the big X over the screen. And I would freak out because I was like, this guy's got to be a mess. <laughs> like, it's got to be awful to see this guy. This guy's got to be destroyed. But he was my favorite wrestler. Uh, got to meet him and everything was awesome. Getting in the business was tremendous. Very yeah. cool. Stevie? I'll go last. I'm trying to think. All right. So long ago. GGP. GGP. Frank Gotch. Oh. <laughs> and this bear named Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> They fucking found him in a lumberjack I mean, camp. Yeah. They fucking brought him down, down river on a log. There I was by the river, beating my fucking robe against the rocks. Uh, the bear attacked me, and we went. <laughs> we, went we were fighting over a half dead salmon on the fucking coast. Because I was like, "That's high protein," and the bear was like, "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> the the fuck you, you will." Ever see, you, ever, you ever see the, the, the You ever see the the video with the fisherman versus the bear? And the no. bear's going, ah, and then he looks up and he kicks the bear in the balls. Oh, yeah, the fucking. <laughs> oh, man, I got to find it and send it to you guys. It's one of the greatest things ever on the internet. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, for me, since Stevie's trying to go back in the time machine and remember what wrestler is his favorite wrestler, um, my favorite wrestler, I mean, there's been a bunch growing up as a kid in New York. People would think it's a WWF, but it wasn't. It was Jim Crockett Promotions and the NWA. Um, Sting. Sting is the reason I became a professional wrestler. Sting versus Ric Flair, their feud and, and their match. And I'm not talking about uh, Class of Champions or Great American Bash. Simple TV match that they had on Channel 11 here at WPIX at the time. Yeah, yeah. It was NWA Pro, and I saw it, and I was like, wow, I want to be a wrestler. And I went up to my mother. I remember this vividly. She was washing dishes. I'm like, Mom, I know what I want to be when I grow up. You know, she's probably thinking doctor or lawyer. And I'm like, a pro wrestler. She's like, okay, go go, go play. You know, and then I felt like, Ralphie, you'll shoot your eye out, you know, type of scenario. But the cool thing is this sat, this past weekend when I went to Comic-Con, Sting was there at the uh, Headlock booth. And I did a pinup for the Headlock guys in one of their comics. And talking to guy Mike, shout out to Mike. 
Yeah, and Mike Kingston like, hey, I, kills it. Mike Kingston, yeah. So I was like, and oh, he put you over too. And I was like, he put you over as a great guy. I'm like, yeah, oh, wow. Bin's, Bin's amazing. Stevie, yeah. But everybody else, you know, Sal's <laughs> amazing too. He's like, yeah. So I'm kidding, Stevie. You're amazing. I love you. Anyhow, I love you too. so I woke up this thing. So I was like, excuse me, you know, I just want to introduce myself. And I told him, I said, hey, man, I just want to say thank you. You're the reason I became a professional wrestler. And your, your, your feud, basically what I just said, your feud with Flair is why I'm here today. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. He's like, thank you. What's your name? What's your stage $10, name? Kid. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> but it's funny because I wanted to take a picture just to be a little mark for a minute. But people were waiting online. And I just cut everyone in line. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it because they're paying to take a picture. Right. So I didn't, heal, I didn't heal him out. But he's like, yo, man, that means a lot to me. Thank you. So it was a cool little moment. Very good. GGP, what I want you to draw is that from the WCW comic where Sting had to cure that kid's cancer. Do you remember <laughs> yeah. that? No, I, I said was... that. I said that yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's like, "Gee, Sting, are you going to cure my cancer?" And Sting's <laughs> like, ah, "No, ah, he's saying one phrase. <clears throat> There's some things even the steer can't do, little buddy." <laughs> and he's like, "What?" What's no, happened? he said, "I can't." No, it was even. It was actually even more like, "What the fuck?" Than that, it was like. No, I can't do that, but you can be a little stinger. And he's like, thanks. It's like, well, that's much better than a cure. I'm in face paint. It's really awesome. And you know who else I saw at the Comic Con? I went in and I thanked him. was Neil Adams. He was sitting there just signing stuff. He had all these prints all over the place. If y'all don't know who Neil Adams is, you guys need to recognize. He's a famous Batman writer uh, and artist. He drew the Batman from the 70s and the 80s. If you've seen Batman in any of the comics... Not, not, not Ribbon. I, I didn't know he's still alive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I walked up to him and I told him, I said, hey, man, I said, your interview on Kevin Smith's podcast, Fat Man on Batman, got me into drawing again. You've been, you inspired me. I just want to say thank you. He was really cool. So, anyway. Yeah, man, your oh, pictures Mom were says, all great. I like well, I like seeing you have a good time G. out there. <laughs> this huh? thing, G. Coleman. <laughs> G. Coleman. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I got I got the official comic thing here on the uh on the Sting Cancer comic. God. That's what we call it. It's uh <laughs> Sting it's Sting, can you help make me better? And then the nurse says as Sting's sitting there, No, Julie, Sting is the only only human like the rest of us, but he can make you an official stinger. And she says, Thanks. With an exclamation point. <laughs> so the, the Sting passes the heat onto the nurse, he knows enough not to say <laughs> nothing. <laughs> He's like, he, like, he, he gives her the door. fucking slaps the thigh where she's got to fucking take it. <laughs> that just explains that that little comic explains why Sting went so far in every locker room because he's, he's very political and very tactful. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I'm ready for my, I'm ready for my story now. Please, yeah. please, I don't want to hold you All back. Right, drum roll. Cause, no, because it's actually in th it's in it's the opposite side of the spectrum with you because I had a chance to tell somebody face to face also that they were the re and I suppressed this much like uh Dr. Ford had suppressed her incident. Uh <laughs> but except mine really happened. So uh oh too soon? <laughs> no, no, not, no, at no. not at all. Okay. So thirty six years ago. <laughs> I walked I, I walked up to mine was not thirty six years ago, but I walked up to Shawn Michaels. We were both in WWE at the time. I got to meet him. He had said some kind things about the kind of shape I was in. And I was like, he seems, seems okay. He seems like he's changed <laughs> from what I've heard. I had never been around him. And his Sal is pretty much giving me the look he gave me <laughs> when I went up to him. So I'm looking away so I don't laugh. Yeah. So I walked up to him and I said, hey, man, I just wanted the same thing. Hey, man, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, you're the reason that I got into the business, and I'm not even talking about back when, all right, you got to stop that for five <laughs> seconds, please. I say, you're the reason I got into the business, and I go, and it's not just because of the stuff you did here. I watched the stuff you did back in AWA and, uh, you know, with the Midnight Rockers, and I just I just loved your work back then, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm here because of you. I worked because of what I've seen you do, and he didn't really say much of anything, from that point on after that, him and Hunter would just be so condescending to me and such so just pricks. And it fucking it it broke my heart and it hurt my feelings. And now it's just like it, but it taught me a very valuable lesson too, that people like uh like Kane and other people I became friends with and looked up to them the way they operated in and out of the ring. You know, we all we all all of our heroes disappoint us, but the positive is you can find other people that you're like 
oh, I should have been paying attention to that guy when he was doing all along. Sure. Instead of being a mark. Uh, so. Yeah. No, I, well, you I, I mean, here's mark. the deal. Yeah, you weren't being a mark because here's the two stories. Uh, quick, my two favorites as I got older, when I became a teenager growing up and, and getting into the business, was Sid and Vader. Those are my two favorites. You know, I just I, I loved them. They were great, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I met, I got to meet Sid, ECW. I got to work with him. I got to do. Okay, told him. I told him. I, same thing as you. I said, hey man, I was a huge fan. I see you, you know, back in the day. I love just Lord Humongous. It was, you know, whole. And he went, oh fuck, thanks, man. And he shook my hand, and that was it. I was so happy the rest of that fucking week. You could, you could have done anything else, and that was like the first stupid week. And Paul had me jump through a table because I was willing to do anything. That whole week, I was just like, yeah, sure, I'll do it, whatever, man. I was so happy. Did he then I got to meet the softball team. Uh, he was gonna, but then he fucked up his his patella again. So oh. anyway, <laughs> um, so then I got to meet Vader, and it was such a disappointment. And I told, you know, I, I gave him, I said, hey, man, look, been a big fan uh, back in Japan, you know. Yeah, okay, cool, man. And he fucking shined me off, and I was like, you fucking short little fat <laughs> cunt. See, I, so I, started, I have the opposite. So I started to fucking rip him, and I said, can I wear your helmet? Because he had his helmet on the table, and he goes, no, no, no. I said, come on, let me wear your helmet. I kept fucking cutting him off because I, this is a true story. Vader does not like if you're taller than him. So Vader has to do this. If, if you're going to take a picture with him, he's got to do this. So I kept fucking shoulder in front of him. And I just stood around that he would he dip in front of me and kind of blow up. He does, and I and then actually Eric Sims at that point was kind of like, oh, okay, guys, let's move along, because <laughs> he's his fucking handler. So, was yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, um, now I, pretty much everybody's handler. <laughs> it's uh, it's no mystery. I was a Brett guy, uh, but you know back early early on when i was a little dude uh just the giants era whether it was andre or big john stud or fucking bundy all those guys were fucking awesome to me um <clears throat> so that that's what had me hooked but then uh i don't know the rebirth for me was tommy dreamer for some reason ecw was the one for me when i became a huge ecw fucking mark and now uh i run the locker room over there so it's it all worked nice. out for me so it's good um, well, to be to be honest, uh, now that you said rebirth, I mean, during the, when I fell out of wrestling in the early '90s, like yeah. n after '90, 90, '90, 90, '91, '92, I stopped watching. When I got back into d watching, I started watching WCW right before Luger jumped onto Nitro, right? Literally, like a week before, I started watching again. Yeah. Coincidentally, and the people that made me also want to be a wrestler was Eddie, Dean, Chris, Regal, Saturn, and Finley, and Jericho. Yeah, they were the whole mid card. Were... You know what I'm saying? Yep. But, Regal in particular, Finley, because they were tough as nails, you know what I mean? But it's Dean and Eddie, Chris and Saturn, those four guys, man. I would I would I I emulate everything they did when I first started wrestling. Uh, well, many moons ago. There you go, guys. You got the inside mark shoot and some real uh stories of uh how people really are, born again or not. <clears throat> uh question about whiskey. Uh pre asked Kfa, my name is K Bob. So from K Bob. Uh, greetings, Ben Hameen, the great Sal, legendary Big Stevie Cool, and that other horseman. I'm a huge fan and have been listening since the beginning. Y'all have a great thing going, and I hope your success continues. My question for this week's listener mailbag show is regarding whiskey, particularly Evan Williams. You, Ben, continually drink and put over Evan Williams and toast up your mason jar, flash the bottle for the camera, kind of some of my favorite rappers. Is Evan Williams that good? Uh, I'll tell you what, Evan Williams is cheap. And, uh, and it is g decent. He says, I'm not the biggest whiskey drinker, but I recently ran out and I've never tried Evan Williams. My go-to for mixing is white label Jim Beam and it's 17 bucks a bottle. Would you re recommend the $13 green label, $16 black label or 17, the 100 proof white label bo uh, bottled in bond version? Uh, definitely not the, the $13 green label. That's sour mash. So unless you're mixing it with something fruity, not really. Uh, I drink the black label, just straight bourbon, and the 17, anything 100 proof is just too strong, whether it's wild turkey or that. So I like a good 86 proof. And really, uh, for that price, it stands up to 40 and $50 whiskeys, in my opinion. Uh, thanks for the show and for taking the time to answer these fan questions. K okay, Bob, P.S., have you seen the new... Uh, smart compose predictively typing thing Gmail is automatically doing now. Creepy, ain't it? Uh, thanks, K Bob. Hope that answers your 
bourbon questions take a trip down to kentucky and uh, take the bourbon tour it's a good time having williams kind of kind of cheap ass to the store and go buy a bottle there's another <laughs> guy right here asshole. Thank you. <laughs> well evan williams is uh they they do a hell of a tour and uh you can get uh pretty pretty lit up and, and take their whole uh tour there it's a good whiskey trail down there in kentucky for sure allow me to offer now I, i'm not a whiskey guy at all but i did have thanks to Thanks to my producer, Chuck, I was introduced to something called Snake Venom. It is whiskey that tastes like fucking apple cider. Right? So you're like, oh, and I'm not a whiskey guy at all. Like, I will not drink whiskey. You smell it, and it's apple. Well, I do now. I do. I drink that. I was like, that's apple juice, man. That's fucked. So you do a shot, and you're like, there's no whiskey taste. It's not a little back, back end, but you're like, all right. And then by the time you're done half a bottle in, you're like fucked. Yeah, <laughs> you have a bottle head. later. Sounds yeah, you're rocked. Right. <laughs> 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 did I say that on the air? Holy shit! Did I do that? Yeah. Chris Stevie. Completely different podcast. What do you think, buddy? What do you think, pal? I do got to make it. Hey, as the Green Horn, I do got to admit, you guys can thrash me for it. Uh, I have had the horror junkyard new episode in my uh, gender neutral messaging system for a couple days. So apologies to Chuck and the crew. I'm going to get that up as soon as we're done with this show. I didn't post it. I didn't post it. Just so everyone knows, Evan Evan Williams has one hell of a fucking shooting star. So good for him. Big yeah. fan of that kid. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, uh, I like uh, to have a drink uh, when we're Wait, doing the show. Stevie's take on Evan Williams or whiskey? Do you do you drink whiskey? Are you a whiskey guy, uh, Stevie? Uh, my we- wife and I will have, like, rum and Diet Coke. That'll be about it, or Diet Zevia now. That's, uh, that's about it. I've never tried anything else, really. I don't know. You drink it straight, though, right, Ben? Uh, splash of water on the rocks, you know. Uh, like a lot of ice, it just opens it up actually at when you put a little water into it so it, it takes a lot of the burn off instead of just trying to drink it that's that'd be brutal but i don't really do uh whiskey and cokes or anything like that i like the bourbon taste i used to be manhattan guys uh at hunting camp and stuff like that but then just kind of switched to after i lived in kentucky just to how how it is that way you know they they do a lot of makers mark down there that's another that's that's probably like Speak, the biggest label speaking about hunting have yeah. you guys seen the trailer for the new movie Vice? No. No. Christian Bale plays Donald. Uh, what's his, not Donald Rumsfeld? What's his name? Um, the Cheney. Vice President Cheney. And uh, what's his name? The dude uh, from Iron Man and Charlie's Angels. What's his name? Ah, oh, plays George. G- w- no, 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 no. The other dude. Josh Brolin, right? Or no, Josh. No, there's another guy. Uh, He's the dancing guy. The guy who was dancing in in Charlie's Angels. Uh, he was an Iron Man too, as the villain. Uh, uh, no. Mickey Roar. He 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 plays Bush. It's really really good, dude. It's ridiculous. I can't wait he to see it. Just like Cheney, dude. Ridiculous. Anyway, sorry. It's all good. Um. Anybody else? Anything on that? Uh, with a smart composed predictive typing thing. I saw it. I didn't. I haven't looked into it. But um, dude, I mean that everything we are is uh, patterns. That's a big part of what I believe in improv. And if they're calculating human life and algorithms and clocking your patterns and speech patterns of what it is, that's not too hard with word combinations when you're talking about numbers and especially if, if they're watching everything and what's being repeated and you know grammar correction or even if it's just normal uh, human speak. So. Um, yeah, definitely fucked up, but, uh, how long will it be until you only have to look at your screen and you can think directly at it and it will fucking decipher without you saying anything. That's four years. Cool. That's four years off. That'd be an issue. <laughs> four years off. I mean, I'll put it this way, man. When we guys send, you know, text or, or in the group chat. What I'm thinking to send is I type a couple words and then the next set, the next word pops up. Yeah. But imagine and if I, you could I, put a, like an EKG no, no, patch saying, on your temple and it'd be connected to a USB and all you got to do is sit here and I can think open new tab for twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman type this in the chat room, go to my Skype. Like I don't even have to say anything, you know what I mean? Until we're actually doing the show. It's crazy. Down with that. And that's, everyone, that's, every, that's four years old. Everyone who subscribes to the podcast gets one of those things and we all do it telepathically. We don't even talk. Oh yeah. Um, okay, dead air. Sorry, I just got a message <laughs> That's from. That's what it sounded like. It would sound just like that. We got a message from subscribers saying uh, to help us out on Twitch to switch it to 
talk show and podcasts because they're limiting IRL. So uh, definitely we'll do that. Thank you very much for that uh, advice. Um, back to that. Anybody Stevie, else? Anything what, was, else? what was that guy, the Twitter guy? What did he say to, to look into something about some kind of chat room or something like that? What was that he was talking oh, about? Oh, wait, Discord. Discord, sir. Discord. I, I'm yeah. a little bit. Sal probably knows more about Discord, yeah. but it is a to, I'm going to be starting to run a, a game for a couple people on Discord. Um, it's pretty good. It's been solid. Uh, I, I ran a podcast on it for a year, a friend of mine, and really never had an issue with it. Uh, it was in. The only thing, like, I knew uh, G Plus was it would start laggy. You could start getting laggy if, you know, somebody had shitty internet. So that would that would drag the whole feed down. But Discord is pretty good. Discord's a pretty solid, solid way. Oh, yeah. Oh, here's one from the chat room, actually. This was the big story of the day. Uh, weed, uh, fully legal in Canada. Yep. Big time. You know, what, uh, you know, or surrounding New York State, Massachusetts, and Vermont, too, right? Are they both legal now there fully, I think? Uh-huh. But, but now here, here's the deal. Uh, so just fucking before Shaggy loads up the mystery machine and everybody goes to Canada, the fucking border's going to get fucking hot. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Well, so and that'll be the excuse to fucking okay. flip New York. This is well. That's my. I'm just for you guys for the for the chat room. Anybody who's doing that, who's in the pot, and that's your thing. You want to go do, just be smart about it. They're not going to let you through, so fucking be smart about it. That's all I'm saying. Well, first off, from my opinion, I don't do drugs. I'm not a pot yeah. guy, but they, they should just legalize it. They should legalize it, and they should tax it, it. and take the revenue. Percent. And get us out of this deficit that they that uh, all these states are in. I mean, they work for Colorado. Now, then, when all the money's generated, then they can lower the property taxes, the sales taxes, or income taxes, and, and you know, use the money that they made off of off of weed to uh, to put us in a in a good financial position. But whatever. Yeah, it would be interesting, man, to see what pressure happens because there is going to be increased border pressure kids getting busted and you know like <laughs> it'd be super troopers too all over again. dude yeah, it's gonna it, be it, stupid the border's hardcore already man like it, <laughs> you got to have the passport gimmick and your license out ready to go going across there anyway well so. i wouldn't know you don't get me booked at crossfire so i can't take <laughs> i mean I already, I already got one small quick smart mouth guy working with phil atlas he's got, a, he's got your spot <laughs> it's okay um, I'll break his leg. Face. Uh, real quick. <laughs> he does. He does a good uh, fake uh, blow his knee out spot. He did it last match. Phil, At- you dude, that would be a fucking barn burner of a match. Actually, even though you're both really great heels, you and Phil Atlas, dude, pff, be an awesome match. He works a lot so, like he works a lot like CM Punk, but uh, uh, he's got his own uh, his own uh, style. I'll uh, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, um, da, 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 da. let's see from Polyester, which is. A phony disco account. Uh, Nixon. Uh, evening, gentlemen. I've been been trying to catch up on Conspiracy Horseman podcast, so I don't know if you guys have covered this. The Health Maintenance Organization Act, uh, which Nixon passed back in 1973, which pretty much sets the wheels in motion for all these medical insurance companies. It's my understanding that it was illegal prior to this act to make a profit off of health care. It's also my understanding that the Greeks invented health insurance. Now, 45 years later, these health care providers run multi-billion dollar businesses that will forever run in the green. It's infuriating knowing that at one time the healthcare field had some dignity. Now, much like GGP and his wishes to go back to the promoter of GLOW, their priorities have been compromised. <laughs> keep up, oh, keep opening up minds, guys, uh, polyester. Um, good, That's great first email. Of all, first of all, the Greeks, <laughs> the Greeks health insurance was a bottle of ouzo or metaxa <laughs> and the evil eye and their mother or grandmother doing a cross and telling them not to be sick and that God will take care of you and you never yeah. will be healthy. That Matthias and all that stuff. So that's the Greeks. But well I sorry to, to tie to tie that back into the weed thing, I saw a story today that if it does become legal in the Northeast fully, just in the Northeast that uh, drug companies uh, stand to lose eighteen point five billion dollars. Well, there it is. Yeah. All the money. And there the it is. Being, yep. That's why it hasn't been passed nationwide. Yeah. You know, Stevie. I agree. I'm just trying to figure out what way they're gonna handle this because the other end of the profit is the prison population. 
Well, that's the other thing they did. They they exonerated anybody with a weed uh, charge on them uh, today in Canada too. So justice got handed this down is with Canada, that. right? Yeah, in Canada. It sounds oh. like Canada was behind 9/11. After all, sounds like that's they need they need some freedom up there. Um, need some freedom. <laughs> you know that that uh, even Cuomo, who takes so much heat in you know a lifetime politician uh, in New York flipped after he was all pro military industrial complex pro uh jail prison system and anti-weed you know and now he's flipped because he knows it's going to go around they're all they're all switching over the third party candidate and the main republican candidates are pro weed and that it wasn't that a dem issue for years and years and years it's it's all about it's all about revenue right now so I mean, you know what? You know what the real crime is with this whole thing. Yeah. And uh, Jesse Ventura was great when he talked about it on Joe Rogan a long time ago. But it's the greatest point there. It, everybody thinks they hear marijuana, they hear weed, they hear cannabis, and they think it's all about people smoking and getting high and right. and chomping around and driving and all all fucked up. They already but are. Really, like you think people well, aren't fucking already all the well, time. They, they, they are. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is like. They, they're blocking THC is the stuff to get you high, right? That's yeah. the component. Yes. And they're, they're, they're not even letting you separate that and just use the CBD. Say CBD oil. We're out in Denver. And then uh, a couple of guys were talking about the, the CBD, like oil for your joints. Yeah, like lotions. And I was like, wow, I would love I would love to get that, like a, like a Ben Gay type thing to really oh, start really. What's that? I'm sorry. You see, you're ruining the groove, this whole deal. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, you're harsh in his vibe, it. bro. He was all fucking. Yeah, we could do it. We could, yeah, I was mellow. You're harsh in his mellow, I was ready to make a run for mayor of Knoxville after uh, Glenn gets thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you use CBD oil, they'll be like, "That guy's a stoner. He fucking right, used. He used. Stone. And I heard Actually, he's been, he heard he's been gay before." My hurt. I uh. Help <laughs> me. No, yeah. get it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. That's just a quick. That's just a quick oh, comedy yeah. callback to the Ben uh, Gay line. That's right, I have right. to break down the psychology of the joke sometimes for these I, I greenhorns guess. who aren't really with the comedy training that they haven't had yet. Jesus. But uh, we'll get them there. I was we'll trying get to get uh, marijuana legalized okay. in the United States, but it's not to fucking do it. Well, no, no. I saw what Jesse was putting stuff over. Jesse was putting stuff over today. Let him finish his point. He was talking about Ventura. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you piece of shit. Letting me finish means you stop talking. <clears throat> okay, so the problem is they, they're exposed for what they're really trying to do because even the CBD or the cannabis that doesn't have the element or the component that gets you high is being blocked as well. Right. And now, now right now, I think they're starting to flip the tobacco part, the tobacco farms over in like North Carolina and a couple places. Yeah. They're trying to get ahead of it. I really believe they want it to happen, but they need to set up the profitable infrastructure, the business plans in place. Yeah, Marlboro Philip Morris needs to be able to roll out cartons of joints day yeah, one. They can't just fucking, trickle in, you know. But people are in pain. People are dying. And people that are dying and in pain who just want a little relief and only got three weeks to live from terminal cancer just want it, just, just don't want it to hurt so much. And they're, they, you know, but... You know, all the other medicines, those hospice medicines, are much more expensive, and people like make a lot more money. Yeah. They're dying anyway. We might as well make some money. I think that's what the Saudi Arabia, the, the Saudi Arabia thing is. Just on that with WWE, it's like, I mean, people are people, the guy's already dead, and people are gonna get killed anyway. We might as well get our fifty million. Exactly. Can't bring him back yeah. to life. Can't bring him back and shoot him. Especially because well, we dissolved his body again. parts in acid, so you're definitely not gonna. Bring them back. And they can't afford the, to, to not make $50 million on the show. You know what I'm saying? They need that stock price to stay up. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If they had canceled that show, their stock would have taken a 20 30% hit. Absolutely. Da, 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 da. Very good points all the way around, gentlemen. Um, Sorry I interrupted you, Stevie. I wasn't trying to be a Stevie you know, Richard. When it comes to the Knicks and stuff, a lot of crazy stuff happened during that time of bills that really – set things up for the greed of the 80s you know whether it was military industrial or whether it was health care and social sacks they found a way to cash in on them coming and, off the gold standard yeah yeah that's uh, dollar super kicked by the united way from frank t uh horse people 
gender neutral. Uh, just wanted to drop a line and say, great show on peeking behind the veil of the machine that is Big Charity. Perfect timing, actually, as my company is just starting the annual Strong Arm United Way Shakedown. Being in corporate environment, what is uh, very strongly suggested is we all make some kind of donation. And being a little higher on the food chain, knowing the inner workings of the fact that the corporate overlords do track and know who makes a donation and who does not make one, this gets my woken mind thinking about the idea of keeping social scores on people as they're playing with in China. And the fact that perhaps someday we'll be living in an environment where we'll be forced to donate to charities at the risk of causing our growing digital existence to be affected by the choices not to donate. Just another way very small freedoms are being stripped away and we are being made to think it's normal or okay. Keep truth flowing, Frank T. 966. Uh, thanks, man. Uh, appreciate it. That was a... Uh, you know, just kind of an episode on the fly that we all uh, are aware of based on, again, what we see in wrestling. But it, it goes farther than that, obviously. So uh, that, that two and a half hours went by real quick uh, on that show. Um, you know, uh, as far as question uh, or anything goes in that with the corporate side of things, yeah. Uh, will there be a social score? Will there be instant feedback in a Facebook when we see those help hurricane relief victims? Like where is the pat on the back coming where there's the brag for everybody? Uh, GGP, GGP donated to the hurricane relief victim. And look at how great he is. And then that's a uh, straight up guilt marketing and, you know, uh, keeping up with the Joneses and, and we, also and one thing we didn't even touch yeah. on that one episode, two words, Clinton, foundation yo yeah we didn't even, touch nope, didn't even go i went driving home i went oh man we didn't even mention them no nope. anyhow so what about every fucking pbs drive yeah okay every college drive every pbs drive every one of those fucking things where it's like for 75 dollars you can have our handsome tote bag the only reason people want the fucking tote bag is so they can go, look, I'm a fucking dickhead who gave you 75 bucks for this piece of shit that I can go buy for 20 bucks at a garage sale and fucking spray paint my own shit on it. So, but they want to, they want a pat on the back. They want to show everybody that they are supportive. They are smart. They watch public television. They watch, they, they support are over. politics. And now like they are over. back I'm to over. the live stage version. I'm over. Back to the live stage version of Les Miserables. Yeah, right. <laughs> you get to watch the German version of Sweeney Todd. <laughs> Listen, growing up in Queens, the one thing my, my parents did every year, they would donate to the Jerry Lewis telethon every year. Oh, no joke. Wait, no, no. Okay, so 138. You're a 138 guy. Remember the fucking, uh, what was the bullshit we had to carry around for Halloween? So any jerk off of your pants you had to put in the box for uh What's the, what was the fucking ripoff we used to... And I was so proud to bring that fucking box in after Halloween. Like, a, a, assholes would give you pennies. Uh, uh, please. But you used to put it in the box. It was, UNICEF? Not UNICEF. No, it wasn't UNICEF. Uh, like, Easter Seal or some Easter, bullshit. Easter. But they'd give you the box that you carry around on fucking Halloween. <laughs> so when you didn't get the candy, you got you got pennies from some jerk-off on the block. Uh, you put it into that, and you brought that money in. You were so proud to donate that money because you were saving other kids. There. And I realized I, I realized those kids never got that money. Out in the darkness, a fugitive <laughs> running, falling from grace, falling from grace. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, God be my witness, I never shall <laughs> yield till we come face to face. Yeah, Vince McMahon, I do, Les Miserables. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're only going to get that here on the Conspiracy Horseman. Um, yeah, man, uh, that's crazy about the shit in China. And I don't doubt that if it's a truly corporate structure, like <clears throat> something that even appears to be more hippie than it is like a whole foods, I bet they clock what people gave and how your political association could work against you and only take Dude. you so far. And now what was, uh, the thing, uh, in the night affirmative action, dude, affirmative action is going to be rebranded and made into the next philanthropy uh, existence. Right. Like how WWE and other people are doing with the sick kids, it's going to be about multicultural uh, and, and you know diversity uh, of, of all races and sexes and even uh, non-genders to, to show how fucking progressive we are. There'll be a whole movement where people just get promoted on that kind of shit alone. 
That's sad. It's Come sad and it's true. <laughs> it's true because it's going on now. I mean, even when you go to the supermarket and you donate a dollar, you know, after you're buying your groceries, they make you write your name on the thing. They put it on the wall so everybody knows you yeah. freaking donated it. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, it's like like that that kid from uh, Mad TV, Stewie. Look what I can do. Look at me. Yeah. Look at me, yeah. you know. <laughs> everybody wants to know that they gave yes. money away to help somebody. Come on, man. Do you know how much money? Do you know how much money Shemp has given to fucking Petco when they put the little paw up? <laughs> I have to donate after I after I spent fucking a hundred bucks on this fucking dog. You're like, would you like to give a dollar? Yeah, I have to. I have to. Oh, you want to sign your little paw? Yeah, sure. Shemp did. All right, cool. All right. Because the dog signed it, so yeah, that works. But that's what it does. Like, Shemp's not a cold-hearted prick like you. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing, like. They, they hit you when it comes, you know, they, we each have our own thing that we can't say no to. So when I look at the fucking screen, it's like, would you like to donate? And they show the cat, the little kitten, and the fucking dog are like all wet and cold. And you're like, yeah, of course I'm going to donate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you show me, you say, well, you show me a little fucking starving kid with a fat belly, bigger belly than mine, and flies in his eyes. I'd be like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Where's the well when you need one? Um, Mandela effect from Charlie exactly. Struthers. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. But here's the here's the secret. When you see the cat, when you see the cat and the starving cat, you you just adopt the cat. That's right. Me and my wife do. You just get it. You go get it. Where is it at? We want to go get it. My wife just texted me. You, she never thought you. I'm going to give you Kim's number. You can give her a call. Let her know. That's what we're going to do next What's time. What's the other thing that Kim was mad that she was all about that turning the gym? Was it about turning the house into a gym? Yeah, she was. <laughs> My wife would never let that happen. <laughs> yep. And video games. He got shut down for playing video yeah, games. I got, I got oh. shut down a few times. <laughs> and he, he got shut down for his hat tonight. He, he got heat for his hat. Yeah, she's like, Wait, yeah. what's wrong with your hat? It's a very nice hat. Oh, Stevie's wife shut me down? Who shut me down for it? What oh, I thought, you're, I thought your wife put heat on you for it. Oh, she did earlier, yeah. <laughs> she asked me why. She goes, why would you wear that? So why wouldn't I wear that? Yeah. Because I'm handsome. I look good at it. Um, look good in anything. Better from, than a dynasty hat. That's what she meant. Oh boy, uh, Sam Harley, um, that conspiracy horseman, uh, Mandela ah. effect. Uh, went uh, want to start by saying I look forward to your shows every week. They really lift up my mood for the rest of the week. Well, y'all, uh, keep doing what you're doing. You really help me uh, stay grounded and realize what is important. Now that's out of the way, I recently downloaded an old Eminem album and listening to Stan with Dido, I remember that the chorus being as raindrops on my window, now it says rain clouds on my window. It's crazy. I finally noticed my first one. Oh, what is uh, your favorite and first Mandela effect? GGP should do a Ben Hameen impression at least once an episode. I've got my bands and now the fitness journey begins. Y'all uh, great email. Um, when did I ever do? When did I ever do a? Uh, just when you do y'all when you come on oh. and shit like that. They enjoy it. They enjoy your impressions. Don't uh, <laughs> don't short sell the goal. That's right. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I remember his raindrops on my window too. Um, rain clouds on my window doesn't really make a ton of sense. <laughs> How the clouds even get yeah. that low yeah, to be on your sense. window? Yeah. Oh my God! That's like life was like right. a box of chocolates. Like we're all dead. Well, I also yeah. saw in a follow-up story that. Oh uh, my God! It's the morning rain clouds up my window. Morning rain clouds up my window. Rain and I, up and my I, window. Rain, clouds, rain, rain, rain clouds, clouds up my window. Yeah. I thought it was the raindrops on my window. I know it sucks anyway. Who cares? Yeah. Well, yeah, I also saw an M&M video, story right? where there's Taking there's an, an argument Brad being should be in the fucking toilet. There's an argument being made that Eminem is actually a robotic android, uh, and that he was he died in 1999. Yeah. Yeah. Was Vince Russo saying this? No, it, it, I saw the story today. It was actually sent to me. Uh, I got one today. What's his name about the princess and the uh, the prince and uh, the princess? No, the princess of uh, we just got married. The American chick. What's her name? Megan, whatever. Merkel. Yeah. Being an android. Yeah. One of the fans sent me. Sent me I remember it. that in the fucking six million dollar man with the android Bigfoot. <laughs> as Andre is the Bigfoot when they fucking. Yeah, no, yeah. it didn't fucking happen. Stop. <coughs> I'm down. Don't get heated, no, man. I'm gonna call bullshit on this. It's this ridiculous. You Come could. On. You're allowed it's, to. That's the whole I point am. of this podcast. Okay, well, don't have to yell. Oh, he's, projecting, do have to he's, he's projecting. He's he's projecting his hatred. He's angry. He's, he's projecting angry. his hatred of the uh, of the dead Paul McCartney theory that Russo hit him with when we our one and only time on Denver mainstream radio <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got kicked off. 
Well, I hate to break it to you guys. Here's a new conspiracy theory. Uh, I think uh, Vince Russo has been uh, cloned, or he's a robot. <laughs> he was clean I, shaven this week. He was from clean what shaven. I understand, and from what little birdies are telling me, he's scared to put some content up on on the on on. No, on he, the, he put uh, it up on the podcast. He put it up. You know what? Oh, he did put it up. <laughs> he put it up. Yeah. All right. Dude. Oh, that theory. Well, there goes my just theory. Like the got the Android theory. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, sent in the group chat that Eminem story about him being a uh, possible uh, robot. I'm not, look, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not gonna read it. You I'm come not on. Read it. I, I hope GGP thumbs up it right now, <laughs> quick. Just, <laughs> <laughs> that way. Um, not, <laughs> so, so wait, wait, wait. What Greek got Pop and I was talking about the fact that I. Uh, you know, ben, ben and I were, you know, especially Ben was extra funny, but could could be to people that already are looking to be offended by raindrops on your window. The You know, yeah. like this would be probably, if you find what, what he does and what we do at Master Chief Theater or, or in general funny, you definitely want to subscribe to the Realm Network. Yeah. If you don't, then... <laughs> This won't this won't change your mind, <laughs> so, especially his his new Saudi Arabia money in the bank idea. Yeah, yeah. was was incredible. What was so. the idea? Enlighten us. Uh, well, do, do it all fair. Don't listen. Do, yeah. No, no, do no. no that was the, the master so the shoot is enough. over here yeah. for badass. Uh, there's 16 uh, briefcases, and one of them has a murder contract in it, and the other 15 have body parts that you can cash in. You can just cash in an arm, or you can cash in a foot at any time you want to. It doesn't mean the match won't mean anything. You just run. You get to run down and, and <laughs> throw a foot at somebody. Yeah, I heard they want to bring Gangrel and the Brood. They want to bring, <coughs> want to bring Gangrel and the Brood back to the Saudi Arabia show in the future. Good. Instead of the blood bath, they do the acid bath. That'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs> drop it on. They can we drop it on some, some women who, who show too much skin, too much ankle. <laughs> they can throw acid on them. We have uh, a <clears> few <throat> names like we oh, had two people like. Oh my goodness! He had um, wow! It's like he just got up and walked off an interview. <laughs> he's the last he's like, off, "What'd you say it. about New Day? Fuck you!" <laughs> yeah. Too soon. They're not robots. <laughs> I had the uh, the pay per view name of twenty eight pages, and then Ben Ben topped that with his too. Yeah, Blood Money. <laughs> That's a good one too. Twenty eight uh, pages. Decapitated. Uh, yeah, oh, WWE, WWE decapitated. That was the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, gonna make groups live on WWE Network. It's gonna have graphics for all these pay per views. It's gonna be, be nice. awesome, dude. You it's should do it on Firestarter Pro. Um, so, uh, so what's uh, what's your favorite Mandela effect, you guys? Uh, what one like just like wow, that's it, too much. Well, we just got the we just got the update that New Days are actually androids. Oh boy! And they got programmed to lose the belt, so it's a work. Unlike GGP, I'm going to go back and listen to this anyway. So, <laughs> what are you talking about? I listen to the show. How do I know? How did I know Stevie was burying me, talking about how to try to get my shit in me? Well, he told someone me how to told, told you. That's a, that's no, a ninety percent chance. Anytime <laughs> you're not around, that's going on. Shout out to Angelo Andrews. He's not involved. <laughs> which uh, which one do you like, Stevie? Stevie which, what's your favorite Mandela, Mandela, Mandela effect? Uh, it, probably probably two two. Oh, I got an echo. Uh, probably two that's a tie is the movie ones that people can't ignore, and that's the uh, the, the Forrest Gump one. Life was like a box of chocolates. Yeah. No, it's life is a, like a box of chocolates. And the other ones, the the Star Wars one, where you know everybody knows. Even James Earl Jones is well, maybe not today, but he's been on YouTube reading the line, saying that iconic line, "Luke, I am your father," and then it changed to "No, I am your father." Yeah. It's people. Bread and circuses. People people love their entertainment. They remember stuff. They remember that more than they know who the president is most times. And this is something that we all confabulated, that we all remembered wrong, and then it's and then it changed back. Yep. Yeah. Sal, what's yours? My favorite, absolute favorite one is when Sinbad and College Humor trolled everybody, and they redid that Sinbad movie. Yeah, but that's not a Mandela effect. I know it was a fucking rib on the jerk offs who were like, "Oh, Mandela effect." We didn't ask you about your favorite rib. We asked you what your favorite Mandela effect. Wow. That was my favorite Mandela effect because people still think it's fucking real. <laughs> um, guys, just so everyone knows out there, uh, Sal is head of public relations for CERN, so he's not going to admit <laughs> that Mandela effect is real because he's a CERN employee. So and just, just for the fucking, just so you guys know, for your edification. I was listening to Sinatra when I fucking cut that guy up with headphones on. <laughs> Did it my way? 
That was good. Uh, GGP, what's yours? Um, mirror, mirror on the wall. That's obviously so that sticks out. Uh, you know, me being a big Star Wars guy, it's definitely Luke, I am your father and the silver leg for the 3PO from the, the right leg on the, uh, from the knee down. Because in the prequels, he's all gold. So why would he have a silver leg unexplained in episode four? You know, and then and all the toys, the majority of the toys, they all have all, all gold figures. The three three and three quarter figures from this Kenner in the seventies and the eighties were all gold. Yeah. I mean, I have a statue of that. You know, of of R two D two and and three PO and his leg is silver. And I when I saw it, I went, oh, that's weird. And that was before the Mandela effect. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I never noticed that. And then boom, hey, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. So you know, and on Crocodile Dundee because my dad was a big mark for the movie. Yeah. The that's not a knife. Yep. Now that's a knife. When it's that's not a knife. This is a knife, you know. So, stuff that that sits with me from a personal level, you know. Yeah, the you guys took my two favorite movie ones was the Crocodile Dundee and the um, Mirror Mirror on the Wall. I mean, that's the one that will flip the most people from our generation. It was never Magic and, Mirror on the Wall, and, and Bearstein Bears. Yeah, I mean that that's Bearstein. one of the biggest ones, sure. Um, but uh, what was the other one I was thinking of? Damn it all. Just had it, uh, and I lost it. Can't remember. Is it Houston? No, Houston not, it's not, not Houston. We have a problem. Uh, that changed. That changed, and it went back to the way it used to be. That's the yeah. only one that I know that's changed. Oh, um, is uh, We Are the Champions of the oh, World yeah. not on there anymore? And We're, even, even yeah. though I hate to put, put the you know heat on mainstream stars, I love to see the reaction uh, from that ride-along. What's the British guy's name? Yeah, and the uh, – Puffer, Puffer McDaniel. Well, he had Julia Roberts. He had fucking Clooney, Clooney and somebody else in the fucking, fucking car. Andy Dick Clone, that guy. <laughs> the, well, they all go of the. They all wait for the of the world at the end, and it's not there. And then they were like, <laughs> it, "Dude, what was that? What was the? I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fucking put it over that I didn't. I wasn't freaked out. The Ford and the VW sign. Remember on my lunch break? I yeah. Drove around the park. Yeah, yeah. The oh, Ford sign is my, day, my, my favorite proof. Like, the others are movies and lines, but, like, dude, that's an actual thing. Like, you, yeah. growing up a Ford kid, my, my dad was a Ford guy. Like, to to know that you – and I went and saw these old 1920 Fords, and they all had the cur, the curl on them. There was no original Ford. You, you told me that. I went, I went and I fucking looked. I went in that fucking line. I spent my fucking lunch break. Fucking, that I probably is my favorite like, just because it got you hot. Bitch. It got you wicked hot. <laughs> a seven-foot giant creeping around the parking lot. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't creeping around. I was angry. I was so, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. All right. We're at 733. What do you guys think? 745 will go to uh, go to the uh, video, and well, then we'll come do, back. Well, we're going to do a Q&A anyway. Uh, we've probably got a lot more emails, right? Yeah. So I'll do another uh, 10, 12 minutes of email. Yeah, go ahead, Devin. Let's answer real quick. We'll bang him out. Bang, 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 bang. Um, yeah, shit. Like Stevie likes to do. Where are you guys on Realm this week? Uh, sorry, I was a day late uh, compressing. Uh, had some issues uh, in my schedule uh, from Charles Lindstrom, sent from his Android. Um, so it's up there. It should be. I sent it to Mark. If it's not, it's on hackerhameen.podbean.com. Um, this one I already read from Canadian Spaceman. He sent it to my email and to this one. Can you tell you how, how, how he wants to be like you? Uh, no, it was about the uh, Saudi beheading. <clears throat> uh, Roddy Piper, so kind of wants to be like me. Uh, Roddy Piper, Death Conspiracy from CJ Cobra Commander 84. Uh, ya Allah, Horseman, I came across uh, this video on YouTube uh, where they insinuate that Piper was taken out over his comments about They Live being a documentary through Twitter and some of the other okay. things he said about a New World Order. His official cause of death was a heart attack. I always uh, attributed his death to being extra upset over his podcast getting shut down because of Steve Austin and his WWE Legends contract being terminated as a result. This person proposes he was taken out with some kind of ice dart gun that causes heart attacks that the CIA had developed. Just curious what your guys' thoughts were. Stay vigilant and question everything. Chris Jones. Chris Jones. This is the guy with the Benoit thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how I remember that? Because I was listening to the podcast <coughs> in my car. I do listen. Oh, cool nice. you guys. <laughs> you skip ahead just the parts where you talk. No, uh, he's, he's only up to the Benoit listen episode. When you talk, so this way when you ask me 37 times, how is my voice on my mic? How is my voice on my mic? Please edit it. Just, it's just him. Why does he have to be so hurtful, Stevie? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out myself. I'm, trying, I'm distracted. Was I'm I hurtful? 
I you're asking me to funny. solve it. You're asking me to solve Roddy Piper's death, and I'm getting, I'm getting insulted, and I'm getting offended, and I'm getting. I apologize. No, there's no fucking. First of all, there's nothing. I won't. Stop. Can somebody, can somebody tell me what happened with the Austin thing? It was never quite clear. Whatever I saw, what, what happened with the podcast thing? He made a kind of joke or something. He had a, he had the, no, he had Will Sasso. No, it was it Sasso. Yeah, it was, it was Will Sasso. Sasso. Yeah. From Matt TV, do an Austin impersonation on the podcast, and said, and Austin got upset from what I understood. And they had words. And then supposedly Austin got him kicked off a podcast one because of it. Allegedly, I don't know if that's true or not. And then he went to this another, you know, site where he's doing his podcast. And that was that. As far as the legend contracts go, I didn't know he got it revoked or got taken away. But it could have been that uh, when he did that shoot interview and he started talking about uh, what's his name? Um, Pat uh, Patterson. Patterson. And Patterson didn't like him. And he said some under the breath comments that people took the wrong way or maybe he was trying to do an angle dick or fuck little boys everybody knew it no no not patterson that patterson didn't like him yeah that him and patterson had relations i don't know i don't want to talk bad about piper he was a nice guy well goddamn son you don't ever talk bad about stone cold on podcast one god damn it yeah man (laughs) uh you know it's uh yeah, unless yeah, Ryan like Satin talks that. bad about you, and then I guess you can get fucking pulled off podcast one. But uh, oh, yeah, that I, that's that's the long and short of it, man. Of uh, yeah, I I do know that the I, the interview is very interesting about the Dave Live commentary because he was for forever you talk to Piper on a one on one, especially if you're talking about that Pat Patterson one or that that Kayfabe commentary one. You know, he's in and out a little bit, and he's kind of all over the place. But that interview about Dave Live. He was about as lucid as you could be when he explained yeah. how it was a documentary. Yeah. It was completely different than the when he was talking about wrestling. His shit exactly. on Alex, his shit on Alex Jones was really good too. Not well, like all difference. in gimmick. Difference is when he's talking about they live, he's not Roddy Piper. He's Rod, Roddy Toomes or whatever his last name yeah. is. And then when he's talking about, you know, all the old timers, they're all carny guys and they all try to make an angle out of everything because that's how they're hardwired. Everything was a work for them. So if you, you ask him a question, you're only going to get half truths. You know what I mean? Guys from Stevie's generation and Sal's generations and, and moving on forward, they're the ones who, who said, fuck kayfabe, let's just be as real as possible. That you shit know, could that shit could go when back to do that, Sal. Oh, the fuck what was I that, fuck brother? KV? I, want, I don't want I to wear fucking, knowing anything. I, want yeah, to, I had to wear an eye patch in a fucking uh, for six months at a fucking airport. What are you kidding okay, me? Okay, well listen, dude. Let's face facts here. Do you, do you try to turn everything into an angle? Do you try everything. to make money I and make money to. off everything? Yes. yes. Pop it okay. I am trying to send me bits right now just to <laughs> shut Papa Don up. You know what? You guys are we're, start, handbook, we're starting an angle to get bits. Not <laughs> get bits. I think I think that <laughs> shit did go back to when they no, wanted to. Man. They pitched for them to do business, and I don't think Piper wanted to put Austin over coming out of the ringmaster stuff. I think it goes all the way back to that. Could be, could be. Yep. I mean, hey, look look at Hogan and Austin, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, there's there's the other part of this too that if you ever hear John Carpenter talk about they live. It's actually right in line with what Piper said in the interview. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's what I mean. That could be, dude, people are weird. I, I don't think anybody's exactly a threat today to the to Nancy Browns to wake up. Like Piper could do that interview, even if Piper went on 60 Minutes and talked about that stuff. Or any, it, it, It's everybody's so desensitized, so confused about what's real and what's fake on the, on the media. It, it, nothing's ever going to go through the white noise. Well, so, put it this way. I mean, Piper even himself admitted that his entire career, he did drugs, he drank, he did steroids. Yeah, I'm saying, like rock stars. as far Two as a years. heart attack, a heart attack ice gun, uh, I would say eight ball of Coke on one dreary night in 1987 might have been the thing that pushed it over yeah. the edge. You know, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, like he I'm, passed away. And it wasn't, now, he had the brain tumor and all kinds of other shit going on. And, like, I know there was all kinds of shit that was alleged and... I know. As far as put it this way, in the horror in the horror world, everybody people are waiting for Sinjin Smith. That was one of the last movies he did. Well, let me let me put it that way. Before it was Wrestlers vs. Zombies <laughs> with uh, Shane Douglas. It was a great. It's, on, it's still available on Amazon Prime, by the way. <laughs> is that where you got up, the foot watch from? it with your kids. Watch it. No, this is from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> but if you watch, <laughs> there's so a movie called Sinjin I love it. Smith. Uh, Sin Smith is a movie that Roddy Piper made a while back, and horror fans were dying for it. And uh, <laughs> it just never came out. It's never been released. 
And it was all, you know, they said it was due to the fact that, you know, he got sick during filming, blah, 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 blah. There's all kinds of stuff around. There's conspiracy theories around that. But again, don't put any credit into him because it's all a work anyway. But then. Uh, well, we I mean, you're point. talking, dude, I mean, we got to put it out there. We're not maybe heart attack gun, but uh, you're talking cancers. You're talking about getting Brain sick. You're talking about like possibly that. keeping no, them quiet. No, Hogan did it. Oh, he yeah, it was he it. Mr. T, Mr. T, Mr. T was behind the whole thing, sucker. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, I mean, I think it, more it, than Downey Jr. killed him from beyond the grave. That was it. He fucking, you want to spray me with a fucking fire extinguisher? Here you go, loudmouth. <laughs> uh, you know, the, we got to give, even if it's 2% credibility to the fact of, Hey, if if there was a downward spiral and there was strange surroundings before that, you know what, what, why, and who, and if possible, it's you gotta you gotta map it out, even if it takes us to a place where we're like, nah, probably not. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. got a, I got a back. I got a story for you. This is a, this is an awesome story about Johnny Rods and Roddy Piper. Well, before they, before you do your story, can I just say one thing real quick? It's like a minute long. I don't want to interrupt your story because I'm gonna forget. I'm sorry, Sal. I just want to shout out Jerry Lynn and Mikey Whipwreck. Uh, they're going to start a new podcast called uh, Front Row Materials. So all the Horseman fans, go check them out. Okay, that was it. I'm going to go listen to that because I like both of those guys. Jerry oh, so Lynn now on Twitter as well. Very right. much. He yeah. just tossed me to follow. That's why I just said, oh, let me just plug their podcast. Anyway, go That's, on. You know what? That was worthy because I like Thank those guys. So, Roddy, the first shoot slap I ever got from Johnny Rod was back in the day, I guess him and Piper used to roommate together when they were, you know, in the business. And he says to me, he goes, let me tell you something. We were so fucking poor. Wait, go ahead. Listen, we were so fucking poor. We ate cat food. Ugh. Right? Me and Roddy Piper, we ate cat food. And I went, why didn't you just eat ramen? It's cheaper than cat food. He fucking open hand cupped me so hard in the side of the fucking head. And it's, but that's just, that is the deal of the old timers, what they had to do to make it. And then us assholes in the 90s, when we broke kayfabe, Steve. No, we said fuck <laughs> kayfabe. No, we fuck said, when we said guys. fuck kayfabe and those old men. Because we, no, we, we knew no, exactly what no, we were doing no, back then. No, we're so smart. No, what I'm trying <laughs> to say, okay, I take that back. What I meant is that He's making in the 90s. How old we are. That's no, I want to know. Not did, at I, all. did I just kill the whole fucking podcast with that story? Is that what no, happened? No, not at I all. Heard, I, was I heard all the winds leave everybody's fucking tails. What happened? No, no, not at all. I just laughed because you got smacked by a little Puerto Rican guy and oh, took he it. He hit me fucking hard, too. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> took it. Because <laughs> uh, he probably had a shiv on him. <laughs> let me show you my knife. This the hey, let me show you that. Wait, whoa, wait, whoa. We all dressed in tuxes. Look at it. And he pulled his fucking screwdriver right out of his back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> From Jersey Scorpio, I'm uh, new to watching podcasts. Love the truth you all bring to the world. But I have I have to say, I will continue to watch because of Big Sale. I absolutely love his geniusness and his, non, uh, yeah, his nonverbal reactions are pure gold. Jersey Scorpio. Nonverbal reactions. See, I believe that because it didn't go to your email. It went to the horseman email. So that's a legit put over. Good girl. So somebody from yourself. Jersey, though. Yeah. Somebody from Jersey. So good on you, Jersey, I guess. Uh, Master lost, Shoot Theater lost, from. Yeah, we uh, lost 25 people in the chat room. But they were probably awaiting the ghost hunt. <laughs> oh, Wait, we lost 25 people? Not instantly, but I'm not. Yeah, we're down to 38. Well, so wait, so I want to hear. Straight. I get a fucking a put over email and we lose 25 people. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> no, was, no, I, uh, it was a coincidence. Way to kill a town. Thank you, bud. <laughs> we'll thanks for the first. house. Uh, Master Shoot Theater from Daniel Fitzgerald, High Horseman. I found a new conspiracy theory in the latest Master Shoot Theater where Triple H gets an Aussie Uber driver. Even though I lived in Australia my whole life, apparently there is a secret American ju junior high school here no one's ever heard. There's primary <laughs> schools and secondary schools, but never seen this junior high shit. Great piece otherwise. Chuck, another shrimp on the Barbie for me. That was good. Chuck, another shrimp on the Barbie for me. Um... Well, uh, that's because uh, you were poor and you grew up and you couldn't go to junior high school. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you had to go to your primary schools with uh, the other low life, uh, you know, aborigines. And uh, that's why uh, you never heard of it. So you, I'm, glad uh, I could, I'm glad I could bats. teach you something about your own country. As you're sitting around a campfire eating bats. Yeah, that's right, mate. 
Are you you got to give, you gotta give, you you gotta garlic, give him a little, you nah, give him a little piece of Master bad. Chief Theater with the, as the Aussie cab driver or the Uber driver. You've never heard of, of, of a junior high school, mate? What kind of primary shit school did you go to? Foster <laughs> sponsored university? You bloody cum dumpster. How was that? Who's your cross eyed friend? <laughs> yeah, who's a. I don't know. I found him. He missed his flight back. He, 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 I was the only number he had. Triple H's cross eyed friend. I thought it was Shawn Michaels, but it could be a Connor's Cure kid. <laughs> wow. Where, where'd you get that foot, Mr. Michaels? Listen, kid. You need to show some respect to the Harvard kid. I don't know. He's been sleeping out on me porch for the last three weeks. We just lost another 30 minutes. <laughs> well, we won a game. I hope we gained them off that one. <laughs> I will say that uh, Rob, if you go to YouTube and you look up the, the Rob Van Dam uh, Iraq, the, no, there's Rob Van Dam uh, Shawn Michaels one, and he imitates Shawn. It's like Perry. He used to imitate Perry the same way, Perry Saturn. And, but he would do the whole deal and talk and with the eye and – it's pretty cool. <clears throat> All right. and nobody can do anything to Rob. That's the best part. Like <laughs> he's too he's over. Do- All right, guys. Can, you know, let him slap you. It's just about time for our main event here. Uh, appreciate you guys writing in the general neutral messaging system. There's probably about seven more in there that uh, we still have yet to get through from weeks past. So uh, appreciate you uh, writing in. We'll try and get to you. But uh, definitely want to shift focus now because uh, it's something we – we're very fortunate to put together during uh, All Bin when we were here at Dynasty uh, defending our tag team titles. And oh, Steve, we're still the champs? Yeah, we're st- I still got the belts, baby. Uh, it, Dynasty might not exist, but uh, the, the championships still do. Um, but Steve, you put a lot of time into this, and I wanted to say thank you for all the editing time. I know how much uh, that takes uh, you know, just, uh, to, to Thank get it right. Steve. And it's never done really in an artist's mind. And I know how much goes into it and it came out great. And I just want to say thank you for all the work you did on it. Yeah. 74 hours. We're finding the right microphone. So there's <laughs> a lot of hours. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to, I'm going to put this up on Instagram and okay. make sure people, uh, swipe up to watch the paranormal special. <clears throat> excuse me um so guys in the twitch room i'm gonna try and do this through obs uh please uh keep it real and let us know if you can hear everything uh as it starts it'll take just a second here hopefully everything goes well but uh from the conspiracy horseman our paranormal project the investigation of the capitol theater in rome new york uh from all bin weekend it was a great time uh, one, one, go ahead. one quick thing i hate to interrupt you uh, no, go ahead. is there a way to is there a way to share the screen through skype so at least it's filtering but the, i don't know if the audio will come through on that i think obs will probably be yeah obs is like, all what i tested earlier and it worked so i'm not sure oh, thank you sorry to interrupt it's We're all back good up. <laughs> all right uh and it'll be on youtube uh if youtube's up uh and <laughs> you know yeah. uh, on a lot of different places so uh definitely in the next uh 24 48 hours we appreciate the love you guys help spread it around to be uh good for us and uh we had a fun time and uh now? what's that yeah i'm gonna play it now in about now? 15 minutes yeah you good? Yeah. You, you, you I just go want to know what's going on when you're playing it. Can they still hear us talk? Or is um, it muted? I, I mean, I could mute us. We probably shouldn't be talking over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all, uh, here we go, guys. I'm going to try and set this up, taking it away. Let me know if you can hear everything. Hey everyone, we're at the Capitol Theater here in Rome, New York. Tonight we're going to do some ghost hunting. We didn't find anything with the Giants earlier, but Ben has pointed us in the right direction. He's even had some stories. We're going to talk about those. 
We're going to talk to Julie inside. She said she has a very interesting picture to show us that's going to blow our minds. And we've seen some crazy shit in our careers <laughs> pop it on. So it's got to be something really stiff. So we're going to go in here. It's late on a Friday night. People are getting arrested. Let's go in before we're next. The Capitol Theater is a theater operating in Rome, New York. It opened December 10th, 1928 as a part of the Khaled chain of movie houses, presenting first-run films until it closed in 1974. After extensive renovation, the theater reopened in 1985 as the non-profit Capitol Civic Center, offering classic films, live performances, and concerts. Paranormal occurrences date back more than 30 years at the Capitol Theater. Witnesses have reported a shadow figure of a man, organ music, despite the lack of a working organ until 2003, whispered conversations, doors opening on their own, and even the sounds of an ongoing show late at night. We started our investigation by interviewing one of the Capitol Theater employees, Julie, and right off the bat, we were astounded at what Julie put before us on the counter of the Capitol Theater. This is what is known as the Capitol Ghost. Uh, it was taken maybe 15 years ago, uh, I believe by a projectionist, but nobody really knows anything about him. He is in older style clothing, perhaps 19th century, uh, which was before we opened, so I wouldn't think it was a civilian or somebody who worked here, but perhaps a performer who was in a, a show that took place in that era. That's pretty much what it amounts to. That's all we know about the Capitol Ghost. With our paranormal investigation off to an amazing start, we asked Julie to take us up to the projection room where this photo was taken, and then Ben Hameen shared some stories about his time growing up and performing here at the Capitol Theater. I said before on the show where it's like, ah, I don't believe in spooks, I don't believe in ghosts, I don't believe in that. But then when you would mention it here, I was like, man, I, it slipped my memory, and I'm not just trying to work you guys at home, uh, that uh, there was a lot of people. I, I did a lot of summer stage here. I did a lot of acting lessons on Saturday morning for like six, seven years straight growing up. And people always see a flash. There's supposedly, I mean, that picture was awesome. That, that's pretty incredible. But there was supposedly a, a story of another lady who had gloves, and people would see the gloves kind of in the front row when they would look up off stage sometimes. And then I had explained earlier about the seat going up and down that way. And it's an old place, so it's going to creak and, you know, make noise. And your eye might catch something some sometime. But another, I remember another time we were doing a summer stage show, and nothing seemed to be wrong with the system. And all of a sudden, the fire alarm went off. We all had to evacuate. The fire department showed up. They checked everything, shut it all, reset everything the next night tripped again so wow. you know once in a while some weird strange things do happen i haven't seen the gloves per se but a, a fair amount of people i know during that time said they would see a flash of light or some like movement and there'd be nobody up there except for maybe the lighting person so pretty interesting man but this place has got a lot of long history so if somebody had a heart attack or there's just got to be the numbers of you know throughout the years where that happened and who knows what uh imprint they might have left around here man for sure it's, it's pretty cool it's good to be back here too man i, I spent a lot of time in my life here and you're a skeptic i am a skeptic but i know you know that's what we're out here for and after seeing that picture dude uh, i gotta believe a little bit more for sure and you know that, that picture is pretty pretty telling Makes you believe in Jesus, right? Uh, let's not get out of here. If we find a, if we find a giant, then okay. JC, you're my man. <laughs> so we decided to split up into two teams to see what activity we could find and cover the most ground in the Capitol Theater in the shortest amount of time. Big Sal, Chuck, and Jamie covered two floors below, while myself, Greek God Papadon, Ben Hameen, and Demetrius Zordos stayed in the main theater to see what activity we could drum up. Supposedly a lady, right? This is a woman that sits in the seat. Well, actually, that There's Ben Franklin. That There's Ben Franklin. That There's that Ben Franklin. That There's Ben Franklin. The guy, I heard the woman sits down in the front row where her That's hands, the white gloves. The white gloves are down down here. Okay, I'm so the, this could be the guy here, even though he showed up in the picture. So right. we're going to ask very general questions, try to see if we get any kind of intelligent responses. Even if, there might be a residual... EVP that comes through. Why are you still here? Why are you still haunting the Capitol Theater?
Usually women don't like to be asked that many questions, by the way. <laughs> Just give a advice from Agreed. a 46-year-old man. Are you upset that I'm in your seat? We were excited to hear what appeared to be an intelligent response to Papadon's question, an audible intelligent response to Papadon's question, whether he was in this particular spirit seat. So after getting no further intelligent nor residual responses on the upper part of the Capitol Theater, we moved to the middle portion of the seating arrangement in the theater to see if we can get any more EVPs. What is your favorite show to watch here at the theater? Dude, I swear to God, I just heard a whisper. I heard what appeared to be an audible whisper over my right shoulder in the direction from where Ben was recording this particular video, and Ben reacted the same exact time I did and heard the whisper as well. There is some weird feelings. I just heard a f***ing whisper over there. I'm not even kidding. I looked at you, thought you were whispering, and I just heard like that. Like over that way. It's more tech people than actors that get to catch these things because not a lot of people come up here and if you're on stage, the lights are shining in your eyes so you really can't see a ton. And it's usually somebody running the light board or what have you will be like, dude, the seat's down. You know, one girl got so freaked out she wouldn't come back up here. Uh -huh. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hear if there was, if there was a pattern of the sound, like if it was something kicking on or doing something. Mm -hmm. But it was literally felt like like where I heard it from was the end chair right there. No, towards the middle by the railing okay. closest to me. If you're in the theater now, let us know. Show us a sign. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. I that was up there, dude. Yeah, that was Hear that? <laughs> if you are here, make yourself known. Come down here. You just did that. No, come down here. Oh Let God. us see you. We want to see you. Rub Stevie's hair. Do something. No, I'm getting enough chills, man. You ain't gonna rub my hair. <laughs> so you asked for a sign. They gave you a stomp, and then you were like, uh, "I want to see. I want to see. I want to see you." Oh my I want to believe. If you have the balls, come out. Good job, Zach Beggins. Who? <laughs> Ghost Adventures, you're provoking them. <laughs> oh, I don't watch Ghost Adventures. Are you an evil spirit or a friendly spirit? Now, here's the funny part about what you just asked. An evil spirit is going to try to trick you and say that they're either a little girl, or that, they're, that they're somebody very friendly and helpful, or somebody in distress that needs your help. You've heard that, right? Yeah. Okay. That's like say, asking somebody like in the backyard, are you a good wrestler or a bad wrestler? <laughs> They're not going to answer. Right. Well, They're not going to answer honestly. Good point. Good by point. the way, it I got, the by the way, you know what I'm feeling right now, which is super weird. You're sweating right now. Yeah, this side is warm as anything. I'm sweating on this side I'm and I'm right cold now. on this side. Yeah, so what, dude, maybe, maybe I'm generating heat. Yeah, but how is he cold? I'm cold on this side and hot on this side. Don't know. He's generating cold. He hasn't said anything. <laughs> What's it like moonlight? Were you flat earther? Dude, where were you? Yeah, dude, where were you? We heard a stomp come up from up. You were up there? So it was you that just made that noise? Yeah. It's just not. He asked for a sign on the EVP, and all we heard was. We were down, we were down here. She's cleaning up it, but she's not making any stomps. Like it was just like she was the stomp came from all the way up there. I heard a whisper over here when I and Ben, you kind of heard it too, right? Like a whisper. Chuck and Jamie went downstairs. She was in the other room straightening up, like no big bangs. And I was standing at the bottom of the steps waiting for you guys to be done. It wasn't a bang. It was. Let me. It was like a thud. Here's what. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like the stairs. No, 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 no. Like just. It was up high. It was, this is me stomping. No, it was it was a higher in a way, and it was like a footstep coming down the steps. 
Upon meeting up with Sal, we discussed our experiences during the course of the night, and Sal had shared an experience in the projection room where we had been just before the EVP session and got a completely different feeling temperature-wise from that room. See, when I, me and Chuck were standing up there. And I'm like, I'm not going in there. And I shut the door. It was cold. Yeah. I didn't get the fuck. I swear to God. Because I thought it was going to be hot from the projector. Yeah. I was like, I'm not they going in there. They have two air conditioners in there at 73. I'm like, I'm not going in there. It's hot as balls. Because it was hot when I opened the door. And I'm like, fuck that. Get out of here. Well, that's, that's crazy. Weird. That's weird. <laughs> we were all amazed at the temperature differences we were feeling throughout the entire Capitol Theater. Most notably the projection room where Ben and Sal especially Sal for some reason, was feeling a lot of heat and hot air as he tried to enter the room. As a matter of fact, it felt like a push of hot air trying to keep him out of the projection room for some reason. And as you see in this picture here, it was set to 72 degrees and it had two air conditioning units in a very small space. Like you. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I told you, it's <laughs> creepy back here, bro. I know the camera's not gonna do, but that goes up so high into the crow's nest up there, and I, oh, I wow. like legit. That's the a. The organ chambers are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty. The, like the ladder for that's right there, dude, and it is a climb. Once you get up like four stories, it's. It's very scary to be up there looking down. No, no, no. I've only doing? been up there once. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> stop, stop. No, no. Hey. <laughs> what is your. I can't believe you're letting him do this. What do you see, Pop? I swear to God, if he feels a touch. <laughs> that they mean, that gives me a little bit of a chill. <laughs> this is the creepy part in here, dude, where it's like the old paint rooms. Like, this is what it used to look like, all sketchy and shit. And oh, with the chains on the back. Yeah, 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 it's you, sketch. Oh, you, you gotta get in here. This is not. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is, this is, even ghosts are scared to go in here, bro. Come on. <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. You in here? <laughs> yeah, he, he's really a ghost. <laughs> now this part, this part here, right? Now, I don't know if it's the shadows or something like that, but there's something. Now there. Is it, it's the room back there, though, that goes to the organ? Is that, it's the one? Uh, yeah. this one. Yeah, this one. right behind us. I, um, That's where you're spending tonight. Is there a mix? Take it if you please. Holy shit. Dave, come in. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of. Oh. I tried it before and it wasn't really hooked up. There's a, there we go. It is. Oh yeah, this is take you right onto the stage, man. That's some creepy shit though. Yeah, so I actually had to do an exit through, I think it was here where the trap door was and you would come out this way. So you can, this, this place is pretty awesome, man. It's got all the old magic tricks and tips and whatever you want to do for your, your show. <laughs> So I'm just saying, I'm just saying once again, one, once I step into here, it has included, yeah. Yeah. it's a vibe that's like, there's nothing back there, but out here it's, it's chills in a different way and it's colder back there. Yeah, it was. Stevie, for some reason I'm getting warm air over here. I'm just like, cold here. It's because I have gas. That's <laughs> that. There, Julie, yeah, so Julie needed to hear that. <laughs> it's just a, it's a completely different, I don't know. And it's different from when I was up there, and it's different than when we were in the first seat. And when me and Demetrius were down at the stage. Demetrius, I know. <laughs> There's your eye. Got her. What do you think, Stevie? I, I think it's absolutely different vibes and different things. I think the audible whisper was the fact that you heard it too. And we both tried. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I almost didn't say nothing, but I could feel like some energy or something on the back of my my arm or whatever and you you were turning at the same time that i was like I'm, I'm feeling this but you know it's easy to do like a false positive after he's like we all jump on the same thing and convince yourself you but, start psychically feeling shit you're gonna put your beard in a whiffle like zach baggins yeah, yeah i'll be just like but, but to get that like obviously we're gonna try to check this later with the evp stuff yeah. but to get something and i'm hoping the camera heard the little it was like kind of like that. Right? It felt like, like it felt like, yeah, yeah. 
And that's kind of what it felt like if somebody had done that on the back of my arm from just a little bit farther away from that, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. It wasn't a touch or anything we like both, that. We both looked at the same exact seat where it came from yeah. on the end in the middle in that second row. So just that alone. But yeah. uh, we got the yeah. Papadon who wasn't satisfied with the, the ghost giving him the sign. He broke your shit. This lady has no Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's just a hater. He, he had carbs today, so he's angry. <laughs> there it is, Ghost Tommy right there. Ghost <laughs> With a, with we're we're back live. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> y'all, uh, y'all, uh, you guys, uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, first, uh, you know, video piece we've gotten to do together, man. I, I really loved uh, all of Stevie's editing and uh, voiceover work, and uh, we just had a really great time, man. Going back to uh, the place where I grew up at the Capitol Theater, and uh, man, it, it's a it's an old place with a lot of old souls. One thing we didn't kind of cover in there is. Um, Right down the street is a Civil War fort called Fort Stanwix. That's actually a reconstruction of the fort uh, from where it was in Civil, or excuse me, of Revolutionary War times. Um, and that fort was actually on the grounds where the Capitol Theater is now. They moved it down the road. So the ghost that we saw, as you looked at him, and people said Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, because you could definitely see kind of a cape and some. That that same look of long white hair and those spectacles. Yeah, preposterous. Yeah. Um, stupid. <laughs> but uh, you know that was a place where battles were fought for the re and during Revolutionary War time, and that ghost sure as hell uh, looks like it. And you know we can smell a work a mile away. That's what we do. We're pros at it. And when this girl just pulled out the picture nonchalant. None of us were like, that was good. none of us were like, oh, <laughs> she's trying to work us because she was ready to go home and she was just cool. Just let us stay there. Everything about this screamed not a work while we were living it. And so that, well, I mean, that's the biggest credibility I can, I can give to it. Well, two things. Uh, one, when they said that the seat goes up and down and this didn't even go on the video that when we were sitting in the seat and I asked the ghost, if the ghost was mad because I was sitting in that person's seat that seat they said goes up and down on its right. own mm -hmm. right and when we were there it was up and then it went down when we walked by it was you know everyone walked by i was messing with stevie and i put it down and then stevie turned on and goes oh my god the chair the chair is down you know i smartened them up and told them i was just fucking with you we could have put that in the video and edited it and made it seem like right. you know because the reaction was real because i didn't tell him afterwards i told him after after he reacted at the the the, the chair was down. So we're not trying to work any of you guys. Everything that you guys saw in that video was 100% legit. And the one thing that really sticks out in my mind because is when we went to the projection room. And when we walked in, it was cold. And when Sal walked in at a different time, that, okay. he said it was hot. That's the that one thing that got me. Up. Yeah. That was weird. And as far as the whisper goes, I never heard it. And I was sitting next to Stevie. Stevie heard it. Ben heard it. I yeah. didn't hear it. So, you know, it is what it is. But, yo, I mean... I did we? I don't know if we talked. Did we talk about that on the show before? About you know when I went up to the thing it was fucking. No, super we hot. really, we really talk about it. Because yeah, I don't want to disclose much, you know. So, okay, so the deal was we went up to the me and and Chuck went up to the projection booth, to go check it out, right? We were out there while you guys were on the other side. We were up top, and we sat in the dark with the fucking camera, and Chuck was at the other end. And uh, anybody here talk to us? Talk to us? Tried catching EVPs? Tried catching everything? Didn't get shit. Ran around with the camera, tried going back and forth. We did a big stream, got nothing. Went to go into the, I opened up the, took the little lock off the projection booth. I went to open it up, got this blast of hot air. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'm not going in there. It's super hot. It was warm that whole weekend. We were all fucking hot. Yeah. It was all, Dude, it was blazing know, hot at the show. It was 95 right. degrees. And I just, I, as everybody knows, I do not tolerate heat. And I just went, nope, not doing it. 
Not going in this fucking projection booth that's 100 degrees. Not going in there. Fuck this. Close the door, locked it up. I went down. We were checking out outside by the phone booth, and me and Chuck were down there, and Jamie doing all of our shit over there. You guys went in, and you're like, oh, we went in the thing. I'm like, how fucking hot was it in there? Everybody goes, oh, no, it was like it was like 72 degrees. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Fuck you. No, it was not. Yeah. And you guys, yet they had the double air conditioners running. For double ACs in there just to keep those yeah. old, because they have the old original projector, projectors from 1940s, 1930s in there. Uh, a couple of them, you know, vintage things. So they uh, definitely so have to is, keep it that climate is the controlled. One thing I cannot explain. I can't say, oh, I was our active imaginations. I got hit with a blast of hot air, and it was just like, man, I'm not going in there. I didn't want to. Didn't want to do it. And that there, was it. there has been, uh, you know, a fair amount of similar claims from people when I used to do summer stage there of like a hot blast of air coming out of there. Like the ghosts were in there and when you let them out, like they, you knew they were coming by it. You know, the thing for me was definitely when you were downstairs, you know, nowhere near us, nor was the girl who was kind of giving us uh, the host of the place. Um, based on GGP's question, the audible foot stomp that came from above us there. I mean, old buildings are going to creak. But in that time to hear that and to see our natural reactions, and then when Stevie had asked or we heard the whisper, and I was just running camera, to feel that come across the back of my elbow and for Stevie to look at that exact way without us having any contact, not calling a spot or nothing like that, I felt something brush past me. And, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm the last one to try and be, oh, in the supernatural. But when something is there and, and two people who are, I don't know, we we're eight feet apart, uh, you know, both have a reaction pretty quickly to that, that doesn't lead to a false positive, in my opinion. One thing didn't influence the other because they both happened simultaneously. Yeah, that, that boot uh, was in a, in a vicinity where, you couldn't get to it easily. You'd have to be coming up from you. You'd have to approach, and it was it was high enough back there to where there wasn't a door to come down from the top. No, there's and no way reacted, nobody up there. When we reacted and turned around, it was only one. Like you, you hear people coming down the steps. It's one, 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 one. This was just one noise. It sounded like a, we what you had said, Ben. I was like. And it sounded like it sounded like a heavy foot. You're like it mm -hmm. sounded maybe like a military boot or I a thought, heavy yeah. boot. But just one boot, just like and and Julie, Julie wasn't anywhere. She was closing up, so she was at the concession stand. And they I were was two downstairs, floors. Yeah, yeah, by the uh, phone booth. And this is a big place, you guys. So the fact of a, a call and answer of when you're asking for something, and and I'm I'm not going to shortchange. There's been other shows locally. Um, one of my students, uh, Bill Vinci, who does The Empire Plate, if you guys would like a really good food show, follow him on YouTube, The Empire Plate. Uh, but he is teamed with Ghost and Toast, where they're doing like a food and, uh, you know, paranormal show, ghost hunting show. Um, and they went and they actually got very similar uh, results of when they were actually uh, asking questions and whatnot and had experiences as well. So this isn't just some workers trying to work you guys, you know, or people trying to get over a TV show or what have you. I remember as a kid, you know, dealing with actors, you're going to deal with people who are always in the look at me mode or melodrama. But some tech people would report some weird things while they were up there by themselves. And there's always talk of being seeing gloves, you know, up in the front row that way. What era did people wear gloves? You know, not not anything, uh, you know, recently where it's like a pair of white gloves to be going out to a formal event. It's just very interesting to me, especially the history that surrounds it of uh, whatever energies were possibly lost in war. And here we are uh, getting actual responses while we just happenstance uh, decided to go do this ghost hunt. Yeah, it was definitely a, a, an eerie situation. It wasn't something that we were, oh, well, let's go because we believe. Yeah. We weren't denying it. We weren't believing it. We just wanted to be convinced. And from my experience... There was something there, um, not because I'm a man of faith and I believe in ghosts or anything like that, but there were certain things that we couldn't explain, like how, you know, being two feet from apart each other, one person's freezing, the other one's sweating, yeah. you know, stuff like that, you know, it just didn't make any sense whatsoever, so I don't know. Yeah, it was, uh, and for me, that's that's why they may, you know, we all have fun about me wearing uh, 
sleeveless shirts or whatever, but I'm always constantly, I'm always constantly warm and hot. So if I wear well, a yes, pants, yes, you are, or, sailor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 But I think that that's a testament to when I'm chilled on a 90 degree night, you know, and yeah. it's only half of me too. Yep. And then the half the time that's, that's, um, pop it on. And then me and Demetrius on the other side of those seats are, that's why we kind of sat so close together so we could kind of just get the area. So there was nobody moving or shifting around or anything like that, creating some kind of contamination with, it. and the weird part is, that you, you you had talked about the dressing room. You're like, we go back to the dressing room, super creepy, and there's creepy corners, and it's dark. Yeah. I didn't get one feeling of anything except for one place where there was light, like where it was brighter. Right. Like we didn't have any, we didn't have our minds playing tricks on us that the creepy looking place had something like right. That, that you didn't feel that thing. energy down there. I mean, and they have redone it. I mean, it's not completely remodeled, but it used to be some real catacomb shit in the early nineties. Now they've repainted it. It looks a little nicer, but you don't have the same energy of like what was going on, uh, where we we're out there. And a lot of like every place you moved, it kind of felt different, like even within 10 feet of each other. So even though it might be a lot of twists and turns and darkness and, you know, is something going to jump out at me, just human instinct, things weren't happening there like they were up in the mezzanine, up in the balcony when we were actually trying to invoke a response. One thing yeah, I wish I would have gone the lights on. Yeah. The lights off can create that also, that, that it's good for TV. But yeah. we, 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 had, and we didn't have any pre -dis preconceived notions. We, didn't, we did a little bit of research based on you. We didn't know about the fort. We didn't have any idea, like, we want to find this. Or we just basically opened up, asked questions that were based on the, the shows and the buildings and just very general stuff. Yeah. And I think, God, it, and we were only there for a little more than an hour total. That's crazy, like, to get that kind of activity. And we were there about two hours, I think. But to, even still, just to, to, to get it uh, on camera and actually have real reactions from guys who – <laughs> do phony reactions that get uh you know a reaction out of the audience this shit was really affecting us and me being you know and sal being the atheists and you know not sal believe more in the occult and the spirit world than i do this took me back and took me out of a little bit of the harder shell that i have when it comes to surrounding that stuff because things were really happening that i can't explain so i have to chalk that up to an experience you know Good stuff. I yeah. can't wait to do another one. I hope we, I hope they asked us to come back for maybe a full one or we get to do another place. That would be really, really cool. Yeah, locally here, uh, we have a Bronner house. And, uh, you know, my wife and I got the the rates because we have to. We lucked out with Capital Theater. We'd have to pay mm -hmm. a rental or sign an agreement or anything. Or give a donation. We, of course, we just had a donation <laughs> for the Giant Museum that, to give you no information. Uh, but we're considering doing that, and that's why I want to get another – camcorder with infrared with night vision and kind of go there and do that but i definitely think we should uh we should try man if we can hook up uh you know some sort of place like uh, a comic con or something like that man what's that what was that graveyard they were talking about remember that's near me too that's forest park uh, graveyard which they yeah, say is really the seventh circle of hell they say is like a gateway into hell where you oh, know uh, let's go yeah definitely you actually let's have to go. get a permit to because too many people feet. have gone to do that to try and get there with unexplained phenomenon uh a lot of the old statues the heads have just been cleaved off like they'll come back the next day and it's like somebody took a ninja sword and just ripped through the head with a katana and a clear blade and the head is just cleared off cleaved off and they even repaired it and it happened again like so stan hansen lariats take off their heads <laughs> but it's from behind it's from a down angle from behind it's not it, like with one clean I'll, swipe. I'll, I'll jump on Sal's shoulder, like, 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 like yeah, Wiz, but, and just start doing Larry <laughs> But nothing's cutting through stone that cleanly, you know? Come on, man. I'm joking. You know, I'm joking. <laughs> you know but I'm, I'm just... Well, it, it's an interesting the, place for sure, man. Yeah. Here's the uh, the thing about that. Whether you believe in it or not, I don't want to take any chances with with, with something dark like that or, or potentially dark. We, should, we have to take preparations that we didn't have to take with... Uh, you know, a uh, capital theater. Like if you're dealing yeah. with demons or evil spirits or attachments, whether you believe it or not, I'm not going to take the chance. I'm good. <laughs> like with my, like Chris, hey, Christy has the. Us going uh, to get blessed is a good, uh, is good TV, you know? Absolutely. 
Oh yeah, that's <laughs> why I go to church. church to get blessed. That thing's gonna fall right on your head. <laughs> so when he, when he, so when I get blessed or I have a communion or something, I'm like, man, this is really good TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, before we go to the Satan Cemetery, yeah, it would be. <laughs> I can picture Stevie pulling Jamie in front of him like Macho and Liz and feeding. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie hightailing it out of there. <laughs> So. My gimbal, you're not getting my gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> the gimbal didn't get enough use that night. No, I used it. It was it worked well for me. Oh, you did. That's right. Yeah. Oh, see. So oh, I just, yeah. just for your just so for your edification. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sal. No, no, Stevie. Uh, at New York Comic Con, apparently it was Gimbal Central. Was because it? all the fucking Mizarks are using gimbals around Comic Con. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got to figure out what else to use besides a gimbal now. That's no, like now that's late. like the championship belt over your shoulder. At I'm not going to do that anymore. Nope. So they can get their rising shot. They're all going to have drones that follow them around next year. Oh, you guys want to pop? But HBO is shooting down drones at Game of Thrones where they were filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't get any leaked footage. Really? Crazy wow. That? That's it's crazy. That's crazy. Are we got any Q&A following this? What do we got? Follow yeah, anybody at twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman uh, have any questions about our Capitol Theater? I know a lot of people popped based on, uh, they thought, you know, obviously you're going to get Photoshop on the uh, the picture of the ghost. Um, pretty vivid, you know, look. Definitely can tell, you know, it's 1700s uh, type style. And, uh I have heard of that before from lighting guys, from dudes who are not dudes who would just look like, oh, I have to be the center of attention, who are up there by themselves, that they have seen things float by and the orbs, the whole nine. And that picture was actually taken by uh, a projectionist who was coming down the steps after a movie was over, or, or excuse me, after a... Uh, yeah, viewing was over. They'd raise the screen because the band is on stage. That was a show coming up and uh, took that picture. They had seen it there. So it wasn't uh, really Photoshopped as me being a, a digital artist. Sure, could I, rec could I recreate that? I could. Uh, I but, you uh, well, you won't. I don't, I don't think you'll do it. Well, you I'll just tell it. you, you just do. I'd love to see it. Uh, I'd love to see it happen. I don't, like he, to do it. I don't want to know how to do it. Okay. Of you do it. He's okay. Professional. All right. Just like he won't finish the, the designs, the other shirt designs <laughs> I gave him. He won't do it. Well, <laughs> those I want to finish good designs, not those ones. Uh, <laughs> fucking guy over here. Yeah. You're trying to throw me under the bus. I'm grabbing you by the ankle, dragging you with me. Fuck that. You're my, <laughs> you're my, you're my, you're my, you're my tag team partner. You're going down. If I'm going down, we're both oh, going down. We got, we're a tag team with tag team belts. I didn't know that. Yeah, I got them both. <laughs> I still got them both. Um, so the, you know, all this for me, I think being the, uh, probably biggest non-believer of us all to have experiences, man. It, it was pretty cool, especially after we put in grind on the giant stuff. Uh, and we got some, it was a good time the whole weekend and, uh, the show was great too. So I'm glad you can share it with us. You guys, there's going to be a blooper reel probably next week. Uh, some funny stuff, obviously with wrestlers of what goes on. So, uh, but tomorrow we'll start sharing it. So appreciate anybody who can help us spread the word. Uh, what time is eight 23. Let's do some mailbag if no one's asking questions. Yeah, anybody got any questions or no? Uh, da, da, da. Do we know if anybody's died there? There has been two deaths there that I know, uh, which people believe the, the the white gloves is a lady in the front row uh, from that time who had a heart attack during a show. Um, the kind of Ben Franklin character, people don't really know. That's just the one that appears. And, um, I think somebody else had passed away downstairs, but I'm not sure. You know, a lot of old people go to the theater. Sal almost passed away from the heat in the projection room. Shit. Oh, it was ridiculous. Uh, no, 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 no. You know what I pop for? The fact that the ghost got took it, taken into the picture and the band, the band's name had the name, the word Liberty in it. Yeah. Right? That and it cool. looks it looks like fucking Ben Franklin with Liberty and all that shit in there. Um no, that sounds stupid, dude. Don't even say that. Ben Franklin. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. Um, the word, yeah, the no, word is dumb. Not stupid. Sorry. I'll go back to the gender neutral messaging system. Um 
from Paul Quinn, Reagan shot, said, Hi, Horseman, I've always had a problem with the alleged attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan. He was trying to pass a very controversial budget and could not get any Democrat support. Suddenly he got shot and his budget was overwhelmingly approved. Later saw pics of Ronnie on the beach shirtless, no wounds to be seen. Thoughts? Thanks for everything you guys do, Paul in Louisville. Uh, very interesting. Saw him shirtless after he got shot and no... Uh, Show me the pictures. Yeah, first definitely. Of all, be first interesting of all, when was the last that? time you seen a president just chilling on a beach where you were able to see him? Oh, Show me the pictures. Obama. Mm. He has nothing but... He, did he see he, he, They went to Hawaii, no, mad... No. T- there's tons of Obama pictures in Calm Hawaii. Calm down. Calm down. Look at he did, did he say he saw pictures of him or he, saw, he actually saw him on the beach? No, he saw pictures of him post, oh, my mistake. post the my shooting. Mistake. And there was no show me the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah please send us pics of you, uh, Paul, if you if you can find them of uh, Ronnie post shooting. I mean, the bigger story to me, it's Sirhan Sirhan, right? That's who shot him. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, uh, was it? Yeah, the guy who fucked echoes. Jody Foster, right? Wasn't that the same guy? Wait, Jody Foster fucks men. <coughs> who the, shot the, guy, the chick who the guy who wanted to bang Jody Foster. He was the one who shot Reagan, wasn't he? I Not Sir Hans, Sir Hans, Sir Hans shoot uh, the other the other guy, the uh, John Hankley. Sorry, wrote wrote Jodie Foster and undermined yeah, 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 yeah. So he tried Sir to impress Jodie Foster. Who Sir Hans, Sir Hans, he shot uh, Robert Kennedy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so fucking Rosie Greer's watch like a bitch. Yeah, wasn't yeah. wasn't the shooting basically? Uh, an indication for him to shut the fuck up because he was rattling some cages. Yeah, that's what that's what, how I know it. But I mean, at the end of the day, to me, this is an M. This is early MK Ultra. Let's put this shit into use right here. You know, with uh, then definite they got the fucking uh, Jan Brady bill passed. Yeah. Well, you know, by the way, too, it, it, the whole thing uh, with MK Ultra was a CIA operation, correct? Yes. Well, who is the head of head of the CIA? Bush. Bush, who's yeah. the vice president underneath Reagan? Yeah, Bush. yeah. I mean, this could have been just a, trying to be a coup d'etat, or maybe it very well could Bush, have been that. Bush, because Bush wasn't his choice to be vice president either. No, it wasn't. No, they That's they, right. they installed Bush as vice president because he was going to pick somebody that was a lot more, I guess, the, well, not conservative, but less into the military industrial complex. Why wouldn't they want to that? pick an actor too? Like who you could control the whole narrative that way. I mean, that's the most CIA controlled presidency possibly ever. Yeah. But the, I, I think that there was, there was a lot of well-known, uh, you know, dissension with him, his camp before he even became mm-hmm. president. And then they put Bush in there. And that's when I think they gave him the big push. Maybe he still wanted to do his own business. And they said, we're going to, well, we have Bush here. We can shoot you and this guy's exactly what we want. And they eventually got him. So, you know, you think about that. He let Reagan serve out the eight years, and then Bush won it right after that. Yeah, and right Which after that, he was pretty much insolvent, yeah. too, memory-wise. Do, do you guys, do you, go ahead, go, Stevie, go ahead. Real quick, do you think, just like with Cheney and, and Bush Jr., do you think in a way that Bush Sr. was the actual president and not Reagan? the policies that were being pushed absolutely Bush. much much like uh cheney bush jr i thought yeah, cheney yeah. always had more power than bush jr when it came to a deep state he was the top guy do you think um his talk that speech with the aliens and all that stuff now people are taking their word for word do you think and him and his star wars program do you think he was going to spill the beans some sort of disclosure you yes. Think that was it? Yes, I think they think were very close, and they pulled back. I think I even think the movie Star Wars was possibly fucking, you know, uh, conditioning to get people used to like multiple alien races living together. If that's the case, I want a lightsaber, dude. I want a lightsaber. Well, that's so that's bad. all that is 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 fucking mixing in Knights of the Round Table shit, so people can can add it to Seven an old Samurai. myth. Yeah, yeah, all that shit. <clears throat> There's probably way better weapons than a lightsaber. Never. Oh yeah. No way. Um, if I can kill you from 300 yards away as opposed to getting in close, I'm gonna do that. I, I'd have Stevie <laughs> come back. <laughs> I have Stevie come in this time machine and catch the bullet with his teeth. That's so you lose. That's it. Well, my my killing takes place in multiverses, so there is no time uh, or space continuum. Um, <laughs> well, I raised you one. <laughs> 
Uh, what up, Horseman? JFK from Jason, Jason Sears. First of all, I love your Georgia Guidestones episode. Great listen. Thank you very much. Uh, great work by Stevie again going up there. Uh, I heard you guys mention the Kennedy assassination on one of your episodes. I want to ask you guys, what do you know about the Kotzenbach memo, Kotzenbach memo, excuse me, which refers to Nicholas Kotzenbach, the acting attorney general for Robert Kennedy after his brother's murder. Second off, you guys heard of uh, the James E. Files. He is the alleged grassy knoll trigger man. He has a video confessing to it all. It's about three hours long. Pretty deep shit. I think you guys should check it out sometimes. Thanks, guys. Keep putting over the conspiracies by exposing the kayfabe portrayed by those in our government. Uh, thanks, Jason. Um, I have watched that video with the grassy knoll shooter from James E. Files. The Kotzenbach memo, I haven't, I just looked that up, says the assassination of President Kennedy not only removed the head of state but also incapacitated the head of the Justice Department, Robert Kennedy. Nicholas Kotzenbach, the Deputy Attorney General, was to play an important role in the early development of official responses to the assassination. Kotzenbach wrote this memo by hand on the evening of Sunday, 24th November, a few hours after Lee Harvey Hoswald had been shot dead by Jack Ruby. A typed version was prepared for the following morning and sent to Bill Moyers, an assistant of President Johnson. Um, it doesn't really outline, well, I mean, it does actually, there's a little a bit here um it's important that all the facts surrounding president kennedy's assassination be made public in a way that will satisfy people in the united states and abroad that all the facts have been told and the statement to this effect be made now one the public must be satisfied that oswald was the assassin that he did not have confederates who were still at large and that the evidence was such that he would uh, be convicted at trial Two, speculation about Oswald's motivation ought to be cut off and we should have some basis for rebutting uh, though that was a communist conspiracy or that the iron curtain press is saying a right wing conspiracy to be blamed on communists. Unfortunately, the facts that Oswald seemed too uh, patriotic, too obvious Marxist, Cuban, Russia, wife, etc. cetera. Uh, the Dallas, Police have put out some statements on the communist conspiracy theory, and it was they who were in charge when he was shot and thus silenced. Part three says the matter has been handled thus far with neither dignity nor conviction. Facts have been mixed with rumor and speculation. We can scarcely let the world see us totally in the image of the Dallas police when our president is murdered. I think this objective may be satisfied by making public as soon as possible a complete and thorough FBI report on Roswell and the assassination. This may run in a difficulty of pointing inconsistencies between the report and the statements by Dallas police officials, but the reputation of the Bureau is such that it may do the whole job. The only other step would be to the appointment of the Presidential Commission of Unimpeachable Personnel to review and examine the evidence announced to its conclusions. This is both the advantageous and disadvantageous in that it can await public opinion of the FBI report and public reaction to it here and abroad, last paragraph. I think, however, that a statement of uh, all the facts will be made public property in orderly and responsible way should be made now. Uh, we need something to head off public speculation or congressional hearings of the wrong sort. Nicholas uh, B. Kotzenbach, Deputy Attorney General. So guys calling for, you know, uh, to demonize Oswald fully, uh, release the reports, and not make it into a conspiracy of what possibly could have been, and they do the exact opposite thing. Stevie, what do you think? Good job again. <laughs> they're, they're just, I don't know, this whole thing with, um, when Bush dies, we're going to we're gonna probably get the whole truth. I don't even know if that's going to happen because Bush Jr. is still alive, and then you have Jeb, and then you have all these other people yeah. that are still alive. I don't know, man, and that's the... It's just, it's mind boggling how people think that he did it himself. It's just crazy. So there is no way in God's green earth that Leah Harvey Oswald killed JFK. It was proven when JFK, uh, when uh, Ventura did his show, he had one of the best marksmen in the United States today yep. try to d replicate the three shots from exactly where it happened, and he wasn't able to pull it off. And from what I understand, Lee Harvey Oswald wasn't a marksman. He was just some guy. You know, he was in the military, had, a, you know, connections within the government. <coughs> but if a guy who's a marksman, you know, one of the tops in the top in the world. All marksman. Off, and on top, top, on top <laughs> of that, you know, using the machine, that the, the gun that, that supposedly Oswald used or allegedly Oswald used, and it couldn't 
pull off the shots quick or not. Right. I mean, come on, man. That's like that's like asking Michael Jordan to dunk, you know, and then having a, uh, uh, you know. Somebody who like having a, a Oompa Loompa try to dunk as well, saying he dunked the ball doesn't Chris work. Envy. Yeah, even better, Chris Envy trying to dunk. Well, I mean, even, know, it just doesn't make sense. Even in all this, he's pretty much saying without saying it, the Dallas police are telling this one story. Let's not be judged by them when we know the full story, where we can demonize Cuba, Russia, show him as an expatriate, you know, all this kind of shit. He's actually trying to wrap it up, be in you know one uh, okay. one fucking mail here i don't want to say email one fucking letter to to whom it may concern who can put the right pr spin on this instead you know let the bodies hit the floor after this what 46 people die after the jfk assassination uh just in in trying to clean shit up instead of just everyone getting their stories together uh and whether it's 9 11 or this there's a lot to be uh, uh punched in those stories absolutely a lot of holes to be punched in sale go ahead what happened Go ahead, Sal. No, go ahead. Keep going. No, I was going to say, what what, what happened with JFK is he worked himself into a shoot because he came from a criminal family that made their money off of bootlegging. He made promises to the mob that, hey, you get me elected, I'll take care of you. And then when they got elected, he pulled the swerve on them, and his brother went after everyone in the mob, so he made enemies there. Mm -hmm. Uh, He made enemies within the government because he didn't want to go through with Operation Northwoods. He tried to. He made enemies with the deep state because he wanted to get rid of the Federal Reserve and issue his own currency within the United States. So he had all these all these players against him. And on top of that, you know, you, if you look at it, it was the Russians, it was the Cubans, it was the Italians, the mob. They all worked together to take him out, and they were all hired by the CIA because they had a gathering the day before where LBJ was there, Bush was there. They all had a big barbecue, and they all went through you know, the specifics of what's going to go down and how they're going to cover everyone's ass so they don't get caught. Now, what happens? They say they're going to declassify. Trump's going to declassify the papers. What happens? The papers come out. Stuff is still omitted. Stuff that hasn't been released. What comes out of it? Now, from, we don't find out the truth. We find out that... Hitler was still alive. Yeah. Out of that. That's the I swerve mean, out of that, right? We exactly. Still... And then, oh, for national security. That was the gimmick. No, the, the gimmick was that Bush Sr. still has power. And he says, hey, Trump, you want to throw me under the bus? I want to pull you down by the ankles, just like Ben did the pop it on five minutes ago when they tried to throw him <laughs> under the bus. And I'm taking you down with me. And guess what? Okay, let me stay back. You know, same thing with 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 with, with uh, Reagan. We said to us a little while ago. He tried to expose the truth, and they shot him. You know, you know what are you gonna do? That's the yeah. Way you think play. you're you think you're over as president, but they're gonna fucking show you how far you can go. You you can get drunk with power pretty quick before they fucking pull back the reins on you, and uh, we'll do it with extreme prejudice. It seems obviously. Uh, I, the people who who could have said no, don't. He fucked them, so they were like, "Nah, go ahead, do what you got to do." And that was that was yep. the thing. The guys who could have stepped in and went, uh, you know what? Just back off a little bit. They didn't. They were like, fuck it. Well, look at look at that list of guys. You know, uh, from LBJ to JBL to George Bush to whoever uh, to Nixon. Nixon was there yeah too. to colluding. Uh, you know, and then Hoover? this is this is the greatest. Yeah, Hoover. This is the greatest piece of locker room past the heat that you could possibly have. They passed the heat to fucking the mob to Cuba to Russia. You know, like all the way across the board uh, of a, a riddle wrapped inside a, a mystery inside of enigma, right? And uh, nobody knows when it's really these sacred cows who are getting sworn in on Air Force One moments after it happens, like uh, w- without knowing it. And all you need to do is watch the Richard Prouty Mr. X piece from JFK the movie and then his deathbed confession, and it's all right there. So, I mean, this is that's an interesting memo. Because uh, it further leads to, let's wrap it up, B, here's the story. And then they didn't do it. And <laughs> it looked like you could just see the gameplay. There. Like That's uh, like the raw script getting leaked. You can see what they want to do the whole time. Well, even if we do Cosby math here, they took his brain. His brain yeah. is missing. Because obviously there's evidence there of you know, what happened. They could try to trace the bullet, which direction it came from, or whatever the case may be. Why does his brain go missing? For what apparent reason? Because they probably ate it. Could very well be. Who knows? They probably and all they had probably, some secret ceremony. They lost it. And they drank wine out of Geronimo's skull. 
while they were eating the yeah. monkey, uh, the JFK <laughs> Good brain. stuff. So, no. Stevie, I know this one of your favorites. Take us home on this. Take us home? <laughs> on the topic, yes. That means wrap it up, kid. Rest we're up. still on the JFK thing? Yeah. Yes. Welcome to reality. No. Well, I wish... If only there was a time machine and I had a choice to make, <laughs> an important choice to make, what would I do? I don't know. We're going to leave it up to the vote. Maybe people can tweet us. Uh, and, you know, we'll give our Twitters out in there. Uh, you know, put a poll up in the Facebook group for I mean, uh, media discussion group. But what would you do? I'm just asking the people out there. You have a situation where you know JFK is going to be assassinated, whether by a lone nut or many nuts. Or uh, the George Bush happens to be in Dallas but doesn't remember it. But you can get there. You have the ability. You have the technology. Would you do that? Or would you want to be the person to slam the steel cage door on Kerry Von Erich's <laughs> auditorium? No, Dick. No, Dick. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I love how you factored the truth. The no, he, he did his job. I asked him to take it home, and that was fucking brilliant. And uh, I think that's a perfect, perfect way to say it. Take it home. Prop. <laughs> it was good. That was a serious master shoot theater. Um, yeah, man. Uh, good questions all the way around. We want to say thank you uh, for joining us for our paranormal uh, adventure episode. Uh, it was a, it was a great summer, and uh, you know these things take time to produce correctly. And we wanted to put something out for you guys as our, our first piece, and uh, you know not have it be a piece of shit limping in and i think it definitely stands up and we definitely had some real experiences for to get some workers to do the fucking perk your ears up and is this a fucking shoot uh something was definitely going on so uh, we had a great time man and uh it just all clicked and happened together and uh we all uh put our head on the pillow that night and knew we had experienced something but we weren't sure what so uh, we appreciate you guys checking it out uh cheering bits tonight and uh and being with us we'll go around the room and uh do plugs real quick uh ggp what's going on well this saturday i'll be booked at nywc wrestling i believe i'm wrestling um uh talent great uh great talent uh from uh new york talent the talent nice right um <laughs> Uh, I, uh, card subjects have changed. Who knows? I could be wrestling Stevie for all I know. I could piss off the office and they put me in the ring with that no, stiff prick. I'm, I'm retired. I'm done, man. <laughs> but um, that's this Saturday, 20th, down in Deer Park, New York. Get your tickets, www.nywcwrestling.com. Uh, um, and then you can just find me on social media, Demetrius Papadon on Facebook, at Greek God Papadon on uh, Twitter, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees backslash Greek God Papadon is my Pro Wrestling Tees store. Greek God Papadon is my YouTube channel. Subscribe. And um, that's basically it, man. Just another fun day in paradise with you uh, three momos going over conspiracies. Yeah. And, you know, having a good time. You know, finding out uh, Capital Theater ghosts and seeing Stevie with his sleeves again like, off. You know, it's always a bonus. <laughs> So. <laughs> Check them out this weekend, guys. NYWC, great promotion down there, Long Island. Sally, what's going on? Not a goddamn thing. I got nothing to plug. Well, you do once uh, oh, Hacker yeah. Hameen gets yeah, off I his. Do have a podcast. See, I... okay. <laughs> yeah, Whatever. once Ben Hameen gets off his lazy list, ass, the new horror junkyard. <laughs> the new horror <laughs> junkyard episode five is coming uh, probably here in about ten minutes, you guys. So. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it's probably one of my favorite movies that we've watched so far because it was it's pretty cool yeah uh, uh the the terrifier it's it's pretty good shit like you know i'm not a, i'm again not a big clown to give a fuck about clowns yeah this was this is pretty good this is a good um, one what are you going yeah. as for halloween this year um i'm just gonna be getting home uh so i'll be getting home from florida on All halloween right. so probably be handing out candy up up top with the dog and and the wife he's going as tired and pissed off beggars. yeah <laughs> i'll be an angry cocksucker out front because these little fucks are gonna be banging on my door all night <laughs> awesome uh, what do you say, Big Stevie? Give cool. them a little box so they can put their pennies in. Give them <laughs> yeah, teach them a lesson. Give them each two cents. Here you go. Here's your fuck pennies, you <laughs> cocksucker. Just fucking flick them out. <laughs> Don't eat this, you little shit. Wrap them up in too much scotch tape where they can't break it apart. <laughs> <laughs> duct tape. I'll just put duct fucking gorilla I'll tape. I'll them together. <laughs> no, but uh, actually, it's not. It's not gonna be too too bad because. The world has gone to shit, and every fucking town has a curfew of eight o'clock. I believe. Yeah. 
Yeah, so they get so, these kids back in the well where they belong by 8 o'clock. Yeah, fucking just dump them in the fucking well. So if <laughs> kids start straggling after 8 o'clock, every, every kid after 8 o'clock is going on a fucking well. <laughs> that's, how we're, that's how we're calling it here. Stevie, you got your well dug? You ready to go? Yeah, I was looking at the, the pictures for the Terrifier, and the uh, yeah, added clowns looks pretty scary. <laughs> I like the picture of the, for some reason, the girl looks like a little diner, and she's taking a selfie with the clown, and he looks like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, looks like when he one of the boys at, at a convention or comic con. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, let me put this over just real quick. I just, this is the best part of the clown. The clown does not speak through the whole fucking movie. So I'm gonna say. Netflix. Tre- yeah, yes, it is. It's, tre- uh, it's either Netflix or Amazon Prime. I don't remember which one, but it's definitely worth a watch. It's, it's very cool. Uh, the guy we're we're sticking with him all month because it's, it's Art the Clown. Uh, we're gonna. The guy who did this, the producer, the director who did this, uh, has put him in other of his shorts over the years. And this was his big culmination, his own movie. So, nice. of course. Yeah. So, so that's quite, the, the horror junkyard. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, is, it, is it better or worse than Wrestlers vs. Zombies? Well, that was an amazing movie. Shane Douglas has done himself in that movie. Great, great, great great effort by shane douglas and the guys in that um but yeah uh, if you want to send us an email you can send it to the horror junkyard at pod at uh protonmail.com the horror junkyard at, at protonmail.com that's right that is the 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 CERN server that uh is secure email so nobody can ever hack it that's it except CERN. <laughs> except <laughs> satan you know such things except satan it, Thank you, Pardon. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, being the voice of reason. Yeah, you know, I told Shane he was at the the Wildcat show, and I made it. I made it a point to tell him that I really did love Wrestlers vs. Zombies, and the way the way he he had so much acting range to to portray the franchise, Shane Douglas in the movie, <laughs> and and then in the wardrobe, what the budget must have been to wear his stuff that he was wearing actually right in front of me, right there. The same the black F, and gold. That black and gold and, uh, F. And I like the inside baseball, how the kid's name was Troy. Yeah. Like, not a lot of people are going to get that. The boys get it, <laughs> which well worth it. Yeah, because that'll sell a lot of ticks, just like WWE when they try to shoot. Uh, you know, I still, I still, uh, nothing beats that. I wish the scene was in there like I saw one time uh, in the hotel room when Shane, even down to the socks, had yellow socks, had gold socks, so gold and black all the way through. I didn't, I wasn't there for him with the gold and black shampoo and conditioner or the, or the soap, and, you know, that I didn't see him put his underwear on. But you know, I can assume that it was some version of black or gold. Sure. I, I, you know, it's, it's a lot of. Uh, I just think he showed respect for the guy. The guy is a triple threat, legit, and he does. He's an. <laughs> <laughs> Why you laugh? Why is that I wear I wear guys? black and gold, so I'm gonna have to change my wardrobe. Stevie, okay, so, <laughs> so how can we get in better shape and be better life. human beings, Stevie? This is after I just buried Shane Douglas. Okay? <laughs> and I'm gonna teach you how to be a better human being and not be so petty. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it, it, like help others and, and don't try to put people down. So, <laughs> he does, he, you know. He deserves it, though. Yeah. But uh, go to stevierichardsfitness.com, the 12-week resistance band training program. Yes, this is the part where I hock the resistance bands, and uh, we got some sales during the show, so thank you very much. Uh, you get a free hip workout video to download with that and also direct the email support with me, and also there will be a shoulder mobility workout. Actually, t- today, because I hurt my back again, I put up a yoga modification workout on YouTube. How did you hurt your back? Carrying the cross. S- sleep, sleeping. The door the like, like I wasn't even making money doing it or anything. It's just a weird. It's a weird. You know, guys. How you know how it is in wrestling. Like I got this injury WrestleMania weekend when I got thrown out of the ring by my good friend Billy Gunn, and I. It was my fault actually. I forgot to grab the ropes. I literally just went through the ropes, and landed on on my hip and back on a floor, like. You know, and I was going out. I wasn't going straight down. I was. You I couldn't see the ropes because all that Billy Gunn vape was in the ring. It could be. That's another. That's a, there's different theories around that too. See, if all you I didn't just, try to get your shit in and you learned the fundamentals and the basics, yeah. kid, this would I tried, to, I tried to get my. I tried to get my shit in by getting thrown out of the ring. I was like, this is a great <laughs> offensive move. I, 
I'm sure you're glad that I like taking that bump. Did you hurt my patented Stevie Richards take over the top rope bump? Oh Did, man, so, was yeah, the was the floor been, hurt at all? Did anybody hurt the arena? Was the arena was, okay? Guys, well, you know, they I, I saw a thing on the local news one time where they said just like when the special technology in the steel chairs, when you tap it twice, it becomes really soft. <laughs> yeah, you, like the yeah, fucking they, <laughs> yeah, magic wand the stunt, gimmick. The, the, the stunt granny was on the outside, and when she stomped her foot, so, I knew we got to go now because the floor now has become a mattress that I can just land on. And I don't know if anybody told you this, um, but I just uh, my sources actually called me during this thing. Wrestling's fake. Hmm. I, don't yeah. anybody, I don't know if anybody told you that. Somebody told Billy Gunn that. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not fake. Don't say that. No. There's well, also, you know, fuck That's how I, I roll. They also oh, have. I, they I, take, are, coach, I take that back. What and, I, and I will. Say, okay, I'm sorry. Like, sir. Go ahead. No, they, this I want to clarify my statement. What I meant to say about fucking K Fabe was that in the 90s, you guys weren't trying to make money off of everything. No, Sal just brought it up, man. He's just trying to bury me, the prick. Anyhow. Go on, Steve. I'm sorry we had to rudely interrupt because Sal has no manners. That's what they teach him over there at CERN, to be evil to others. Go on. 12-week resistance band training program, stevierichardsfitness.com. Free hit training, uh, free hit workout video to download. Also, direct email support. Yoga video off my back injury, which was apparently was my fault for not realizing wrestling is fake. And um, then you can follow me at Steve Richards on Instagram, at BWStevie on Twitter. Go to the YouTube channel, please subscribe there, and also Pro Wrestling Tees, uh, dot com forward slash Stevie Richards. Uh, Twenty eight pages, uh, uh, pay per view poster coming out soon, over along with T shirt and uh, ringside chair, uh, blood money too, protect the capitation. Yep. Uh, the ring say. mats, ring mats are becoming the fire starter pro. <laughs> What's that? Are you, are you going to be offering the Saudi Arabia hit program where? You start losing weight one limb at a time. <laughs> yeah. You guys show up at your house and cut off limbs. Yeah, it's yeah, a 15 Saudi part Radio program. The program is, is actually a group of 15 in a class. So, you know, it's a group workout. You have to meet at this hotel <laughs> real, real quick in and out. Yep. You should, you should have a survey who chops you better, Ric Flair or the Saudis? <laughs> <laughs> Master of the chop. And I'm uh, Hacker Hameen at Hacker Hameen on Instagram at Ben underscore Hameen on Twitter. Please hit us up. Let us know what you guys thought of the uh, our paranormal adventure. Uh, definitely anxious to hear your guys' feedback. Blooper reel coming soon. Uh, as Russo put over, you can get our new awesome uh, Conspiracy Horseman shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Ben Hameen slash SCG shirt slash Stevie Richards slash Greek God Papadon slash your throat. Infidels, uh, you know, uh, on behalf of uh, my, my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack, Greek God Papadon, uh, Stevie Richards, Big Sal, uh, it's Hacker, I mean the Conspiracy Horseman infidels. It's twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman, y'all. <laughs>